Ended. The Clone War has... I will never yield to you, girl. You'll have to kill me. That might be the Mandalorian way, but it's not my way.
WaveCon 2024 is going to be here before we know it, August 2nd through the 4th. It is Blind Wave University is the theme this time, and we are hosting it at Merida College. Remember, tickets are limited and on sale now. Head over to blindwave.com slash wavecon to buy your tickets today and enroll in Blind Wave University. Class dismissed. Yay! Hello, everybody, and welcome to Badonka Gonk. Aaron, we just watched a little tiny teaser about WaveCon that's coming up. We did. Yeah. WaveCon in August. And you know that WaveCon uh, is definitely going to have a lot of talk about Star Wars. Well, I mean, just because probably we'll, we'll be, be there. there. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Not as like a scheduled event, maybe. Love what? Hey, I mean, you we, know what? We will be there scheduled, I'm sure. A lot of people in the past have talked about wanting me to do a full collection video one day, right? Uh-huh. Yeah. Yes. Sorry, I was throwing that in there. If you come to WaveCon, you might be able to see the full collection. Oh. Uh, because I do I have it at the studio, so, and we are doing a I studio tour. I thought you were going to promise like a video yeah. or something, but yeah. you're just saying like, yep. you'll, you'll get it early. Mm -hmm. No. You'll be able to see it in person. That's one perk coming to WaveCon. Mm. Uh, everybody gets to take something home. No. <laughs> <laughs> That would be crazy. That would be crazy. Actually, you know what? I do have a decent amount of doubles. <laughs> Maybe I can find sure. something. Uh, yes. Well, well uh, hopefully we'll get to see some of you guys over at WaveCon. Mm -hmm. But for now, we have Badonka Gonk, our podcast, to talk about Star Wars. Absolutely. One thing will be the Twilight Company Battlefront book that we covered. Yes. Or that we will be covering because we read it over the last, well, I listened to it over the last month. Mm -hmm. And I'm excited to talk about that one a little bit. We're going to do that. I also, for the first time in a long time, went on a toy hunt at a mm, toy show. And I sure. thought it might be fun. I'm like, yeah, I can't show you the whole collection, but I can show you what I've gotten from now on. Speaking of collection stuff, yeah. right? Yeah. yeah. So I got a big old bag of goodies that I haven't bought toys for what feels like a year now. Yeah. So I uh, allowed myself to accrue some allowance. <laughs> and got some stuff. Well, so. That's really cool. Yeah. I so saw we'll some that. Dragon Ball stuff that you had gotten, but I haven't yes. seen any Star Wars things, so that'd be yep. cool to see. I had to uh, do my honoring of Akira Toriyama. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So I, I bought some of those as well. Now, um, do you want to go right into the toy hall? Um, yeah, or we can do that. Do? I, I figure we'll also probably have a point for questions. Questions. So guys, make sure you submit any questions that you have mm -hmm. regarding, uh, we can cover all kinds of stuff. Uh, the book, there's lots of Star Wars stuff. Bad Batch has been going on, which has had some really cool stuff as well. Yeah. So we can talk about all kinds of great stuff. But, yeah, let's look at some toys. Let's look at some toys. Uh, so we were at the Columbus Toy and Doll Show, I think it might have been called. Okay. But really nice place, really cool people, huge, huge, huge. place at the uh, Ohio State Fairground buildings. Um, and there were two people that recognized me. Oh. Um, not one. Your brother. No, not my brother. My brother oh. went and his and his boys went. But there were two people, and I saw it was fun. One guy was like, oh, yeah, Blind Wave, Wave Squadron, I watched that. Cool, okay. <laughs> and he sold Star Wars toys. So oh, I that's really definitely cool. definitely made sure I bought one or two from him. Um, and then <laughs> when we were checking into our hotel, because we stayed the weekend up there, mm -hmm. checking our hotel, the guy checking us in the entire time was like, all right, here, do this and do this. And we had our, uh, Obi with us. He was like, here, do this pet thing and that type of thing. And then at the very end, he kind of looks at me and I'm like, I'm like, and he goes, I know you are. <laughs> you, he the, whispered it to yeah, you? You're on YouTube, right? He's like, I watch you all the time. And then the guy that was the bellboy, or I'm, I'm not sure what you call them, mm -hmm. was there too and heard him. He was like, how do you know him? <laughs> <laughs> who, who is he? Oh, he's on YouTube. Like, you got a YouTube channel? What is it? Everyone was like whispering. <laughs> anyway, well, it was really funny. It was fun slash like this the tiniest bit like, that's okay. I, I think it's okay, right? Yeah. <laughs> okay. Yeah. That's yeah. funny. I wonder why he whispered it. Yeah. It was just funny to me that the entire time he knew who I was and I he, he, I didn't know that. Sure, so, yeah. He was just doing his job. Yeah. And then like, oh thank God I was just being nice today. By the way, right? <laughs> yeah, it's like if you were like making pizzas and yeah. George I'm not Lu saying George, I'm not and George Lucas came in. Exactly. You're like, I gotta make my pizza. Yeah. You're like, by the way, here's an extra pizza. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> exactly. And when I say nice, I don't even mean like uh my attitude or anything like sometimes i try to hear more than like like 
I don't hear as well as I do sometimes. Sure. Sometimes I'm For not sure. paying attention, and it takes a lot of effort to pay attention. Sometimes I just don't take that effort. Sure. So I was glad that I was paying attention to him. <laughs> sure. Because he could have been like, oh, so I know you. I'm like, uh-huh. Yeah, see ya. You know? Well, that's true, too. Yeah. And maybe that's why, like, you whisper it, because then you're like, you mm-hmm. got to pay attention to a whisper, right? Yeah, you got to pay attention to a whisper, maybe. Yeah. All right. Well, let's All right. look into okay. these toys that We're you're talking about here. into some toys. Now. I don't even know how many you got or what oh, you I have. a decent amount. How We're just going to go through some of these relatively quickly. Um, but I actually quite like this line. This is just like the Star Wars Saga collection. And uh, up here in this corner, you can always tell what movie it's from, which I always thought was a cool okay. thing. So this is from A New Hope. This is him, Dazon, who is a cantina alien. I don't know hmm. if you remember him. His head kind of like pops up in one shot. But uh, that's him. This is also a great way to yeah. remember trivia, because that was the only way. I didn't have the books and like the uh, visual oh, galleries man. when I was young. Young, I only had the, the action figures. <laughs> Interesting. Okay. So that's him. We oh, also it comes with a little hologram figure on the back. It totally does. Like As a red, red stormtrooper. You got a red stormtrooper. This one has a red, uh, looks like an Obi Wan, but this is a clone trooper sergeant. So phase one armor, clone trooper sergeant. Okay, cool to have those. Whenever I can find a uh, a clone that I don't have, it's a fun day, and there's a lot. There's a lot of variants. There's a lot of clones, a lot of variants. Okay. We really need to model it model once. it once, and then they get to play around with it. So we got that. Um, we got another clone here. This is a, a 442nd Siege Battalion clone. So this is Phase Two. This would be on like Kashyyyk with Yoda. Okay. Yeah. Right. So Episode Three. So we got one of those. Um, I'm going through some of the smaller th- stuff first. We have a uh, stuff too. that uh, one looks older because the the plastic. Yeah, looks so yellow. this is the thirtieth anniversary. It still has the original Walmart six dollar. Uh, man, these these cost six dollars. That's a long time ago. Mm. This is a fan choice one. This is Zev Sineska, who is one of the uh, Zev Sineska. Zev, yes, Zev Sineska. Yep. Who's Zev. So he would be Rogue Two. This is Rogue Two. Uh, okay. Captain Solo. Commander Skywalker, that's Zev. Okay. So we got. I remember being younger, being like, "Oh, that's yeah. that's just Antilles." And then yeah. like later, I'm like, "That's no, that's that, ain't, not that ain't him. That's Rogue I don't know who This guy is. And because of this one, now I know his name. Mm. <laughs> so it's fun. That was a fan choice. So they used to do, and they still do sometimes, but they do like polls. What figure would you like? Here's figures we've never done before. Zev got uh, the 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 poll winner. He was the poll winner. Uh, for that one. Did they get shot down in Hoth? Then, um, wasn't he battling in Hoth and I'm Zeb does re- battle, but I don't think he does. If he dies there, or not. I can't remember. Okay, yeah. Hmm. Um, but speaking of <sighs> people that did something and not all of them made it out, this Aaron is one, two, three, four, five of the Pod Racers. Ooh, cool. Collected. From so Toys ha- R Us. Yeah, from Toys R Us exclusive, baby. Yeah, <sighs> I miss that. So who all is there? Okay, so we got Dud Bolts, Mars Guo. Kleeg Holdfast, Gascano, and Team Toe Paragles. Huh. Yep. Let me see that. Gascano is probably the one you know about the most. He has the, the long arms. Four arms. Yeah. Kleeg is the guy with like the crazy hair, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, I'm not sure who the alligator guy is. Mm-hmm. And and I don't know if I'm Dead sure Bolt. the other two. Actually, I recognize this guy. Yeah. Huh. I think there's like, what, 18 racers in that race and what, 20 or 12 of them? finish something like that there's not many <laughs> there's not many dud but, bolt yeah what a name dud bolt so that's the alligator looking guy mm-hmm. no i i recognize mars as well from yeah. something because he just had like a dinosaur look about him well he's a uh a bodotten is he a bodotten right isn't that mars or am i wrong i mean he, isn't he the girl guy he looks kind of bodo- he looks bodotteny yeah I believe I didn't, he is a bot Bodotten. I didn't realize. Yeah. Uh, I mean, I didn't know about Bodottens yeah. until Clone Wars. So early, if you remember so. Queenie and the Bodottens in the Jar Jar Mace Windu episode of Clone Wars, the Bodottens actually showed up in episode one, and no one knew. Yeah, I didn't know that. Yeah. Huh, interesting. So that's a fun one. I got to find like the other collected like that, because I have some pod racers uh, collected singularly, but I, I always like it whenever they do battle packs like that. Sure. Yeah. How many are there? 22? How many raced? I think it was like 18 to 20. 18? Oh, that was yeah. a lot. Hmm. I don't know. Hmm. Got to count the flags. Yep. This, is a, this is a fun thing. Uh, I actually have both of these figures, and this is a weird part of my collection, but I don't have the blockbuster value includes two figures version. What? It's double-sided. This is the Darth Maul lightsaber of action figures, Aaron. So they gave you... <laughs> 
So you buy Sessi Ten, uh-huh. and you just also get a clone trooper. Yes. Hmm. Yep. Block it was uh, value. definitely a like there's there's been various ways throughout the years of satisfying a certain fan called a uh, an army builder. Yeah. In that they will buy every clone trooper, every stormtrooper they find, so they can literally build an army in their collection. Sure. Like have them on yeah. a field and stuff. They have like a Foot Locker thing where you yeah. can like. I'm guessing there's something in the. Little I'm sure boxes. it's just extra. You know, another reason that I keep my stuff in the package is because you often lose all of your accessories, and sometimes they just give you a bunch more mm. because you lost a bunch. Here's another know? lightsaber, different guns, yeah. or or binoculars, or yep. I guess they're not called binoculars. But this is from the old uh, Saga Legends Legacy Collection series, so that's cool. Um, obviously, one of the one of my targets of stuff that I like to get is stuff that would have been on the shelf when I was younger, mm-hmm. you know? Um, but I never saw this on the shelf. So it was no, just a really yeah. cool find. I don't remember ever seeing anything no. like that where I had like a flip it over. There's another one. I have another one over in my collection that's kind of like this, but it actually opens up and you can see both of them at the same time and it hmm. closes. But this one that's neat. is not like that. All right, we're moving on. This, <laughs> I haven't, I don't have one of these. I do now. This is from episode three, Revenge of the Sith. It's a crab droid. Um, obviously, my mint and box tendencies don't do well with ones like this that you really should open it and put it together because you can't really tell it's a ca- crab droid yet. Sure. <laughs> but the huh. back you can. <laughs> that looks cool. Yeah. It would, like, if it could be in the box uh-huh. like that, that'd be sweet. But yeah, yeah. it's. It would take up so much more room. When I think of the crab droid, I, the first thing I think of is that one mm-hmm. trooper like jumping on top of it, shooting, shooting down. Yeah. In episode three. Yeah. That's that's the kind of thing you need to buy to put on the battlefield thing you were just talking about. Absolutely. Where you yeah. have like here's the droid army and yeah. the clone army and they're coming up and battling. I actually do have a. It's like a secret hidden dream, because I, I again I don't open much. But if I were to ever open everything, like how awesome would it be to just build a giant diorama. It was all the figures? Yeah. That'd be crazy. I, and, and if I did, I would definitely have a clone trooper on top of this thing. <laughs> yeah, right? <laughs> you'd have to make some different things, too, right? Yeah. Like, you'd have to have, like, a Naboo Theed kind of area where uh-huh. you can have, like, here's these this battle going on, yeah. right? And then you have, like, a Geonosis, like, here's a bunch of just sure. battle droids and clones. Yeah. And then you just work your way all the way up through to, like, Endor and stuff, you know? Yeah. And just keep going with that. That'd be kind of cool. Well, let's work our way up to the Battle of Hoth. And this is, I love this figure. It's giant, but it is General Riken. Huh. Carlos Riken. Uh, but he gets his own, like, yeah, like. The glass computer thing. Yeah, like the glass computer thing. Exactly. I don't know what it's called. His Just console. a heads up display yeah. on a console. I'm not really know. sure. But I love when figures can include this. You know, this is not cheap, but this was back when Star Wars figures were flying off the shelf. So. I don't think I ever got anything that had something like that in it. Yeah. Like, that's cool. I don't ever remember having, like, a. Just the glass computer screen. It's kind of hard to play with, I feel like, right? Like, generally, sure. you want, like, a cannon mm-hmm. or something that you can integrate with your other action figures, whereas this is very much like, let's head back to headquarters. Hmm, the data doesn't look good. Sure, <laughs> you know? yeah. A little harder to play with. Or, like, with. you're playing with, like, ATSTs yeah. and snow speeders, and then you go back to him, and you're like, watch out, they're coming around the end, you sure. know? And you're like, oh, okay, I got yeah. Thank you. Thank you, General. You know, like, that kind of thing. Definitely the biggest difference between being a younger fan and to being an adult fan that collects toys is, like... You don't look at things for their playability anymore, mm. just their uniqueness and what it means to you, you know? See, now so you're really talking like about, like, like, in Pokemon, where yeah. it's, like, there's cards you can collect that are really cool, yeah. or there's cards you get because they're playable for, like, actual being in the deck. Exactly, exactly. Uh, we're still going. We have another clone commander. This is just clone commander. Uh, they don't have a specific name, but this clone specifically um, I just really, really love the loadout and the color. It's very like dark black and white huh. stuff. It um, is very black and white, which is yeah. unusual. Yeah, and I believe this was made before the Clone Wars came out too. So uh, that mm. arc trooper look was something that appeared before the Clone Wars uh, came hmm. out. That's pretty cool. Yeah. What's the uh, coin in there? Uh, let's see. Yeah, they have an exclusive collector coin. I mean. Okay. Different lines have different things. Collect all, so yeah. many coins kind mm-hmm. of thing, too. Because I know like some of the newer things are buy these six action figures and get yeah. an extra action figure hidden sure. from all the, you know, inside of it. Do you remember episode one figures? They had that little like chip stand. Yeah. That you could, I had you the, could stand it up 
put yeah. your figure on it. It was a figure holder, but it yeah. was also uh, audio. Uh, yeah. You had to have the uh, comlink. The comlink, yeah. And you put it over top of the comlink, uh-huh. and it would give you lines from the movie. That's one of my favorite like gags. Uh, Clone Wars figures, which we might have one or two, had like uh, playing cards. You can play like a little card game. Yeah. Um, and they it's still cool. do little things like that. Uh, some of them have like little film cells. I remember uh, film cells too. Mm-hmm. I had film cells for uh, the time that I was like collecting and getting action figures was around episode one. So yeah. I was getting a lot of those com chip things, mm-hmm. and then I also was getting um, they were like the black, blue, green like card backs. Yeah, for like the older movies. Yep, and those had like little film things in them from yeah. like I don't Power know, of the like, Force. Yeah, Power of the Force sounds right. Yeah, yeah. Uh, this one's a bit newer in that it has uh, a three figures in it. And it's kind of based off the old vintage collection box as well. But we got Obi-Wan Kenobi on a Tibby and Don station look. So his blue mm. look from the, the, the game. I'm sorry, the show. The show. So these from, are all based from Obi-Wan Kenobi's show. Well, not all of them. Okay. Uh, this Purge Trooper with Phase 2 armor would be from Fallen Order. Oh. I believe. Huh. Um, and then we got... But actually, you know what? There was a Purge Trooper in uh, Obi-Wan Kenobi at one point. So I think it does work. Okay. Yeah. Either way. And Tika would be the uh, the jaw that was at his cave. The one that he was, yeah, trading with and stuff. Yeah. So when it says Star Wars Obi-Wan Kenobi, it really means it. <laughs> I was wrong about that. <laughs> I was just like, oh, look no. at this stripper. All right. Uh, we have nothing small left. I'm just going to go through some of these quick. Okay. Uh, some of my favorite things to collect are comic collection stuff. So here from Dark Empire 2 is the returned Emperor Palpatine clone (laughs) and Luke Skywalker. The Palpatine clone. Yeah. That's Uh, cool. Again, somehow he returned a couple times (laughs) because this is Dark Empire 2. (laughs) So it happened before. Okay. Yeah. thought this would be a a fun way to go over some legend stuff. (laughs) Luke looks interesting. He He has such a cloak, but also Palpatine has like this... I don't know how to even describe it, but it's like a... Almost like a very, vampire yeah. uh, thing, right? Yeah. Well, Aaron, in Dark Empire, Luke falls to the dark side. Well, that's not good. Yeah. He actually tries to... Okay, obviously, the Emperor is super powerful. He can come back like this. I'm going to learn the dark side and use it against him, was Luke's plan. Hmm. And it didn't work out very well, but Leia came and helped him. Also, his uh, his lightsaber is uh, a unique color. Yes, it is. It is blue. It's not red like I was expecting it to be. Uh, I can't remember if it's meant to be Luke's Episode Four lightsaber or not. I don't think so. I think he just has a lightsaber. Just has another lightsaber. Yeah. yeah. Hmm. Uh, I won't crack it open, but it's a very stylized comic, Dark Empire. Definitely gets you that feeling of like, I don't know, mid '80s Watchmen feel almost a little bit. Okay. But I really love these because of the comic that's in them, and I now have a version of Star Wars Dark Empire Two Number One that's sealed. So. Cool. Don't have to back and board it. Good. Okay, there's that one. I got another one. This is uh, Star Wars Empire. I, d- uh, I actually am not familiar with these two characters, but it was so unique I had to uh, check it out. Hmm. These two characters are Lieutenant Judlin and Dina Sean, and they are S- Star Wars Empire. It's two female Imperial officers. Interesting. Um, and again, I'm not super familiar with these two characters, but I was so just kind of intrigued that i had to pick it up i you don't often get female imperial officers in toy form and there's Um, a lightsaber here and there's also a lightsaber there as well so interesting that would be one that i would want to open up and check out but i don't know those two i hope this is interesting to people by the way (laughs) star wars empire yeah i just uh uh okay we're gonna go this one next we're gonna do a shout out to one of our uh star wars youtubers out there kyle katarn Okay. But we're not talking about that Kyle Katarn. We're talking about this Kyle Katarn with the uh, Yusvin Vong character. Kyle. Oh, is that what the Yusvin Vong look like? Kyle was part of the new Jedi Order. I've I've heard a lot about him and I've read about stuff with him, yeah. but I've never actually seen a Yusvin Vong yeah. in any kind of format. It's uh, also my favorite Kyle Katarn figure that I've seen yet. That's pretty cool. The ones that I have are more Dark Forces where that one really feels more Jedi Outcast, Jedi Academy, Kyle Katarn. It's very Kanan-like to me. Yeah. Yeah. And then the using Vong, I remember just having like they're a very organic mm-hmm. race, right? So like, they have an ampy staff, uh, I think is what it's that, called. Okay, that must be the big old staff. He's Which got there. it's a it's a staff that is actually an animal. It's more like a snake that mm. can it will crawl around your arm when you're not using it. 
But when you do use it, it can, like, harden out. You can do different things with it. It's very coded to, like, when Moses comes to Pharaoh and he throws down his staff and it turns into a snake. But then the the Pharaoh's wizards come out and do the same thing. It's kind of It kind of feels almost biblically inspired as a weapon hmm. to me. Interesting, so, okay. But that's from Star, that's Star Wars Tales that has this in there. Uh, I haven't read this comic, but I have read The New Jedi Order, and I just love that Kyle Katarn is in there. So I'm going to have to crack this open and read it at some point, oh, too. Oh, yeah? <laughs> <laughs> uh, last one with the comics, and obviously people are going to recognize one of these guys. This is Grand Admiral Thrawn as he appeared in Heir to the Empire tie-in comics. Uh, so he has his Yalis Armory. Yeah. The, I don't know how to say it. The don't lizard. ask me. Um, and then Talon Cardit, who uh, was a big player in the Legends version of the uh, Rebellion. Really? Yeah. Okay. So it's just cool to have that figure, too. He uh, is part of many uh, fantastic Legends books, so I'm glad that I was able. Because I have a couple of Thrawns, but I don't have a Talon. And also, it's just Thrawn stuff is really cool right now. Hmm. Um, it's it's cool also to- quite expensive. <laughs> Thrawn stuff these days. <laughs> I bet because yep. of having that uh, push. Absolutely, it's neat to have. Uh, like at this point when this came out, then it's just there were books and comics of these characters yeah. that they're doing, and I'm yeah. trying to think like, I don't, I don't, I haven't looked, but have you seen any like High Republic figures or any of that kind of stuff yet? Anywhere? Um, not yet. Because though... like that's that's currently like that yeah. is in the uh, you know comic and book yeah. form. It has an acolyte will be the closest thing to mm-hmm. having some kind of High Republic. Sure. Like character thing and I, I, yeah. i'm sure they'll make action figures based on that they have released action figures or not release them but they release pictures of acolyte stuff yeah but i get what you mean but like, like back here like yeah. at, at this time you didn't have more movies right you no. just had books and you had comics and that's what you had so to continue yeah. those lines going you had to pull from something and it's you know? extremely rare to get literature characters as action figures yeah. because guess what kids that watch star wars generally don't do they don't read all that much so they're not really playing with, oh, here's Mara Jade, you know? Sure. It's cool for us to know who Mara Jade is, but kids aren't going to go to the you know toy aisle and tell their ki- like their mom, give me Mara Jade, you know? No, they want Luke and Leia and Han and the character, you know? So yeah. it's hard to get those characters produced, but when they do, it's something special. Yeah. So that's usually what I gravitate towards when I'm at a toy show, is the stuff like, oh, man, I never even knew this existed. This is so yeah. cool. And when I was a kid, I definitely would have bought it. If I could. <laughs> I didn't really think about that then, but this is interesting because there's also uh, – I have one of those comic ones, uh-huh. I think at home somewhere. Maybe I brought it here. But it was a comic one, and I believe it had Prince Zizor and yep. Leia in it is who I think it was. Yes. And it was based around the Shadows of the Empire yeah. um, video game. But, like, Prince Zizor is kind of in that. Mm-hmm. But I remember having a Prince Zizor like, yeah. action figure back then. But I never really thought about it being, like, this isn't from the movies. This mm-hmm. is more from books or comics Absolutely. or – Maybe even video. Shadows games. the Empire really helped when it came to that because it was like really one of the first. Who's Dash Rendar? I don't yeah. know who that is, but it sold amazingly well. So that kind of opened the door for fan choices and some figures that, you know, if you really wanted to succeed in the toy business, you just do the popular characters over and over and over again. Yeah. If you want to please a uh, ever aging group of people that have bought your stuff in the past, you make brand new stuff no one's ever seen before. Mm-hmm. And somewhere in the middle is profit, <laughs> you know? Yeah, I never had a Dash Rendar figure. Yeah. It was really cool. I don't even remember in the game or the book, but he had this thing that connected to, like, his back that it, he had, like, a rifle with him, but he could, like, swing it behind him on, like, an arm. And it really? And go back. So that was really interesting. I remember him having a jetpack at one point, but I remember that. That's yeah. cool. Uh, this is recent, but I don't have it because I haven't been to Galaxy's Edge in quite some time. Uh, I When I went to Galaxy's Edge, I made sure to get all the exclusive stuff I could. But this one has come out since I've been there, and I fortunately saw it there at the show. So I thought, hey, I'm going to pick this up, and it's going to be a cool thing to show off. So this one actually opens up, and you can oh, see we creatures. have uh, a Minoc, a Porg, eh. a Bogling, Hmm. And a Kuwaitian monkey lizard. Uh, two of them uh, colored the way one that you're usually used to, and the other one they a don't... lot more Clone Wars, Hondo Anaka parrot looking one. Sure, yeah. So. Some of that, I mean, I think there was some blue in the Mandalorian ones too. Mm-hmm. Yeah. A Minoc and a Bogling, huh? Yeah. That's cool. And in the future, when we try to do something like this, if we, if you guys like it, we'll try to make sure we have ourselves like a really close up camera or something too, because the Bogling especially. I think is really cool. He's so small, but yeah. he's so cute. There's a Boggling that comes with the Cal Kestis so Black Series, which these are Black Series figures. 
but this one's slightly different. So it's just cool to have that exclusive, and I was really happy it was there, and the markup was not that bad. Good. So yeah, that's cool. Uh, All right, I got. It'd be great uh, there wasn't porgs in it. Yeah, maybe two minox. <laughs> I got three more things here. The first one, I mean, who doesn't love boga? There would be one boga. You know, this is you could classify this oh. as like almost like a vehicle, but it's not. Obviously, yeah, it's a sure. creature. But uh, this is just a really cool box. Uh, unfortunately, one side of the box has faded in sunlight, so somebody had this on their shelf for a long time. In direct sunlight, like at which a is why it looks that way. Near a window. Whereas that one doesn't so much. So, I mean, that does suck, but one, I'll just put it on the other side, and two, I will not have it in direct sunlight for that long. Yeah, sure. So anyway, that's a fun one. That's cool. I like the boga. Dude, that was, yeah. That would be, a, I, I would love to have that as a mount, just yeah. riding on a lizard. Yeah. Uh, another thing that I would like to ride is Zam Wessel's speeder. <laughs> this is her... Uh, Oh, and Vio yeah. speeder, right? This okay. is the atmosphere speeder that has the, wee, you know, the guitar yeah. sound to it. And uh, I have the Anakin Obi Wan speeder that I picked oh, up cool. uh, years ago, and have never been able to find Zams. Well, that's and sweet. at this place, I found Zams. That's really cool. Yeah, yeah, that's cool. I love that. So I really like this one. It, uh, yeah, it, I don't think it includes any other figure. Sometimes they do. Sure, but it is blast apart. <laughs> Oh, you can blast it you apart. You can blast it apart, which is kind of cool, because it does crash, I yeah, suppose, down does. there by the Well, he stabs well. into the glass and yeah. or the, the uh, shoot, whatever steel. Mm -hmm. uh, here's the last thing that I have today. This was a uh, gift from my wife, who also attended the toy show. She got me this uh, in celebration of our upcoming anniversary. Okay. Uh, which is May the 4th. Yes. <laughs> Um, now, when I said earlier, like I used, I like to collect things that were on the shelf when I was a kid, right? Mm. Now this one is the 1980 Whoa. X Wing. You'll notice it's Mark Empire Strikes Back. The first version of this figure was 1978, and it has the just Star Wars, just Star Wars. Right? And then this one was also re-released for Empire Strikes Back. But it is an old yeah. uh, figure. Now, uh, I should say vehicle. This guy, you know, Jancy was the one that saw it, and he pointed out, he, you know, the box is open, but it, he, he has everything in it, has every sticker. Nothing is missing, yeah. which is incredibly rare. Action figures not included. Yes. Everything else should be there. Yeah, but it's incredibly rare to get stuff like this. It's so such, it's, It looks so old. Yeah. You know, like yeah. the style of it. Yeah. Like, like I, I personally don't have nostalgia of seeing this on the on the shelf, but what we know about uh, collecting at that time, you know, 1977 didn't even have figures. They no. sold a cardboard, you know, piece of crap in promise of figures later, and then they came out with three vehicles. They had a Tie Fighter, the Land Speeder, and the X Wing, and the X Wing was the one that sold off the shelves. I'm sure, yeah. Um, so it's just kind of cool to have that piece of uh, well, especially because like they would have had the movie out, right? Yeah. Like you saw the movie, you went to go buy the action figures. Yeah. All you got was cardboard because you had to wait. And Absolutely. They were like, Promise we'll get it to you. Yeah. But the X wing is what you'd want. That's what defeated the Death Star. Yep. You know, Luke Skywalker flew that thing. Yeah. And I don't even know if Jancy understands <clears throat> what this means because it's awesome. I had such a great feeling like putting it in my car after because it's great. I'm putting the collection. But I also have never really bought the old stuff yeah. because not only is it cool. It's super collectible and it's super expensive. So she might have kicked open a door that should not have been opened. <laughs> well, so can, thank you so much. She can look I love you. that in the future. <laughs> anyway, that's my haul. Uh, I just gives me unending pleasure to not just buy a thing and bring it home. Uh, to go into a stall or somewhere I have no idea what's there and find something. I love going behind the rack and looking through the stuff, you know. Like, I got yeah. that one, got that one. I don't have that one, but that's not that cool. Oh, I got this one, you know. Uh, Jancy, I'm sure, was tired of it halfway through, but she stuck sure. out the entire time with me. <laughs> well, I remember being with you at the, uh, there was like that toy box store uh -huh. that we went to, and I was like looking around at all these places, and then yeah. like you had been in like one aisle. Yeah. But I was like looking at all the shelves, yep. and I came back around. And you're still there, like, yeah, look at this, look at all this stuff. <laughs> and I'm like, have you have you looked anywhere else? No, just no, look, look at all this. <laughs> what do you mean? What else? <laughs> all right, all right. Yeah, but no, it is some really cool things, and I, I kind of do that, I guess, with uh, 
with Pokemon sometimes. Mm-hmm. I'm usually always looking for like the Bulbasaur, Venusaur stuff as yep. like my main things that I'm trying to find. Yeah. Because I'm like, I-, I can't collect everything. Oh, there's so, so long. There's so much of it. I mean, there's but, so much of Star Wars. I mean, what I have of Star Wars is a percentage of what's out there. Mm-hmm. And mine's too much big, you know? Yeah, right. But, you know. I understand. Just the hunt is so, it feels so good. Mm-hmm. When you find that Bulbasaur you don't have. Yeah. And it's reasonably priced. But look at this. <laughs> Like, it's the feeling you have when, like, you I've killed this deer and I shall eat it. You know? Yeah. Just the modern version of that. Yeah. Yeah, that was the place in Indianapolis that uh, we went to. Yeah, yes, it was. <laughs> <laughs> it was. Uh, it was a lot of fun. And they had Pokemon there that we looked at, too. And uh-huh. that's, then we went to somewhere else. And that's when I bought my other Pokemon decks, which was really yeah, cool. Yeah, that's right. <clears throat> it was on that same day. Which, that's the sealed collection that mm-hmm. I do. Yeah. <laughs> Yep. Well, thank you, Eric, for sharing some of your collection with us. Thank you. And some of your new things. Yeah. Uh, maybe I, at some point we can like pull out some of the uh, your favorites in the collection. I'm, all, or I'm always getting the question of why don't you open? And I have a bunch of reasons. But I'm not insanely opposed to it, mm. to opening it up. Especially now that I'm older and more responsible and feel like I could catalog everything well. But it just it'd be such a job. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Like, if I just did nothing but open figures for a long time, I feel like it'd take me at least two days. Yeah. Yeah. Probably. And that's a lot. You just do yeah. an, like, you do one unboxing video day on Wave Squadron, yeah. being like, all right, here's what comes yep. in here, and here's, look at these figures, and you just show everything about uh-huh. it. <sighs> yeah. You know, my brother, when he was young, and he probably is the person that got me into this, he would open his toys, but like with an X Acto knife, mm. and then he would carefully put the package back together, and then like, put it in a bag and put it like under his bed like i'll save this it might be worth something someday and i remember always thinking like that's not how that works you idiot. you opened it you're they're gonna know <laughs> no i wish i don't know whatever i did with them but back when uh-huh. i was uh when i got nintendo 64 games yeah. and super nintendo games i would always open it mm-hmm. and then i'd i'd uh flatten the boxes and keep like the the books inside sure because they would always come with like a little manual book and then the, the box and mm. I, I think i would take out like the cardboard inside that was holding like the game yeah but i would flatten the rest of it and i put it yeah i put those boxes in a box sure and i had all of them saved for like all of my life of like getting super nintendo and 64 That's games cool. but i have no idea where that box is i don't uh, know if i got rid of it if my yeah. parents got rid of it if we threw it in the trash okay no idea. i would keep the boxes too but i wouldn't flatten them that sounds like a great idea yeah well, I'd put them on my shelf, and eventually they would tear apart and or cardboard, you know? Yeah. Well, there's like, you know, GoldenEye 64 where it's like, well, mint in the box is worth this much. Yeah. Cartridge is worth this much. Mm-hmm. But then there's like a little middle ground where it's like, if you still just have the box yeah. and the game and the manual, it, you know, it doesn't, it's not the mint price, but it's more. And I'm like, man, that's crazy. It's Definitely. like double the price of the cartridge, just having the box sometimes. Yeah. But, oh. <sighs> well, that was fun. <clears throat> yeah. No, thank you for sharing that. Um, You're welcome. That wasn't indulged to me at all. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, we uh, do have the Battlefront book that we're going to talk about, and we also have uh, questions we want to get to, so uh-huh. don't forget to submit any questions you guys have, whether through Twitch or YouTube, either one, and uh, we'll try to get to some of those, hopefully towards the end of, uh, of podcasts. Mm-hmm. So, uh, but let's get into uh, Battlefront Twilight Company. Let's do it. So, Aaron, this book is a tie-in to a game that's a tie-in to movies. Sure, yeah. When I yeah. saw that initially, I was kind of like, eh, I don't know. It's tie-in stuff. I mean, I, I know it's Star Wars and it's franchising, and mm-hmm. when you're trying to like create these categories, it's ultimately like, it, it, dude, you're just buying merch for a thing you like, so shut up. Sure. <laughs> you know, like, I get that. Yeah. But it, I, I think it put me into a, a position where I'm like, Almost a little skeptical about going to the book. Okay. And that skepticism was not rewarded because <laughs> I ended I ended up really enjoying it. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I was. It took me a little bit to get into. Mm. I will say I, that it took me a little bit to get into, and it was it demanded my focus. There were times where I can't do anything else but listen to what's happening. Mm-hmm. You know, because it's uh, it, we, our pace goes sometimes. No, I yeah. I understand what you mean, mm-hmm. and you also jump from. Uh, at least listening wise, like uh, chapters for this would be real small and yeah. then real big, um, with like, yes, a lot happening absolutely. in this one. Uh, I I started it. I, I think this book I really liked and I kind of didn't like because I I had I think I had such trouble focusing on all the different aspects sure. of what was going on. I really enjoyed in the first two chapters I listened to. I'm like, this is cool. This is like a like a band of brothers <laughs> types of type of yeah. like Star Wars book. And I was mm-hmm. like, I think that'd be really cool. Um, I think it was close to that, but I think it might have went more grand than I was anticipating. Sure. 
with like uh, different time jumps, I get what you mean. different locations, different battles. Yeah, I, I think it would have been kind of cool to really kind of focus on like Keep a, the trenches. a small group and really get to kind of know. I don't feel like I really knew. Yeah, all the characters in this book. It yeah, was like uh, Namir is a big one that mm-hmm. you really start to understand. But then there's like so many other members of Twilight Company, whether it's like Roach or Twitch or Brand or yeah. and I, I feel like I kind of get little glimpses. Into I get what them, you mean. But I feel like in Band of Brothers, and this may be because we watched this more recently, uh, <clears throat> I, I had a better feel of a lot more characters in that, I, I think. Whereas this was much more Namir focus. And I think it would have been yeah. kind of cool to kind of jump between different ones and, yeah. get, and get to know like uh Godron. Gadron. He was a really cool character and he I wanted was. to know him more yeah. i feel like but no you it, it almost gives you the feeling even less so because this came out before rogue one mm. where like hey all these con- characters are interesting mm. and they're gone mm. <laughs> you know you kind of have that feeling sure but i suppose is that appropriate for specifically a battlefront book sure right because the one thing to point out with this book like this isn't a battlefront two book this is battlefront one mm. and we should say the new Battlefronts, right? I know yeah, there's a the, Battlefront the 1, a Battlefront 2, twice. But the first Battlefront didn't have a story mode. It was just a multiplayer It was just game. a multiplayer. It had solace, but nothing like story-wise happened. I kind of felt like this was trying to give a story mode to a game that doesn't have one. Does that make sense? Sure. Because in the second one, you have, yeah. like, whether even if it was only, I think, four hours, five hours. Yeah. It wasn't very long, but there was a story element mm-hmm. in there. But in the first one, you didn't have any of that. Yeah. You know, you know, it kind of works. You know, at some point, we, we get, like, points of view of stormtroopers. So mm-hmm. we get, like, the other side. But generally, when we look at the Empire, we're looking at, like, the people in charge, Vader's, Vidian, those kind of characters. But here we got stormtroopers, mm-hmm. which might, okay, that makes sense thematically for a Battlefront book. Yeah. So maybe me being so worried about it being a tie-in kind of set me up to be, like, oh, this is a cool character. I should not think he's going to last very long because when I play Battlefront, the guy on my left dies every two minutes. Mm. <laughs> you <Sure. know? laughs> so, sometimes you're dying every two minutes. Exactly. Right? Sometimes you're dying every two um, minutes. The, the one thing I have to say about the Stormtrooper aspect, though, is that mm. I don't feel like we really got that very well. Like, no, I, not, I, enough. I, I really not enough. I don't really feel like the Thera or Vera Some, uh, yeah. was like kind of like the Thera. main Stormtrooper that we kind of followed. Mm-hmm. And I, I felt like it kind of like... Sh- she has an aspect about her that's yeah. really, I'm you know I'm part of this empire. I look forward to the stormtroopers. I'm gonna mm-hmm. run. I'm gonna do one duty and then come back and help my my uh, uncle or father, whoever ran the bar. Yeah. Um, but there was I don't know. I didn't feel like we really got a good. It would have been interesting maybe if we had a mirror of Namir and Twilight Company mm-hmm. with like here's one of the squadrons of of troopers. Yeah. But I don't feel like I feel like we just kind of got her and um every once in a while we'd cut over to the. Prelit, Prelit, uh, whatever. Yeah. Uh, um, v- Vess, v- some of the V, I feel like. Yeah, I know um, I wrote it down in my notes at some point, but I don't know exactly where. I mean, I didn't necessarily care about uh, that guy. Prelate Verge. Verge, yeah. He's like, in that he small was... circle of Palpatine supporters. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Like, he was, like, kind of crazy with uh-huh. that, right? They, uh-huh. they say he has a Naboo place, and he, like, has rituals of trying to scar himself and stuff, yeah. <laughs> stuff like that. But Which, like, I mean, we have people... Um, you know, Captain Phasma from the sequel trilogy. Like it still kind of rolls over there because she's obsessed with Palpatine too. She has a uh, chromium armor, like from a Naboo uh, ship. Sure. You know, is that why she has? It? I believe she's so. like a fanatic for. Palpatine? I believe so. I mean, that's the very least like my loose studying into the sequel trilogy for okay. for that. But I mean, there's a Captain Phasma book that we'll get to eventually. Oh yeah, that'd be. I'm good actually too. really interested in that. Okay. Yeah. Well, I didn't know about that, but mm-hmm. I mean that's that's cool stuff too. I just yeah. felt like the imperial side of things didn't add as much, mm-hmm. and I, I found myself being like, "Can we just get back to like what the rebels are doing?" I guess. Yeah, I, I felt that way a couple times, I, and I don't think it helped either having um, Thera. Like most of Thera's stuff was, those were the small chapters. Yeah, it's like let's dabble in this for a minute, and then let's mm-hmm. go back here, and then it's like here's an hour with this chapter of sure. Twilight Company on a mission. Yeah, and I'm like, okay, this is really cool. How we take out? How do we take out this ATST in mm-hmm. the jungle? And we got to hit this distillery, and then we got to yeah. g- go to Hoth, mm-hmm. <laughs> you know, and be on Hoth during be on Hoth during yeah. the attack, uh-huh. you know. And that was a cool moment, too. Yeah. And then we'd have, like, some Imperial stuff sometimes, and I'm like, I don't necessarily care mm-hmm. about these as much. But yeah. I think some of it uh, was trying to just connect and give you a feel of Sullust, because mm-hmm. that's where Definitely. she was mainly based on, right? Um, like I said, I, I feel like 
saw such a cool looking planet in there and they're like we didn't we didn't do any story stuff with it or anything ah give it to a book yeah <laughs> give it so to somebody like, in a book for for that kind of stuff it seemed pretty good but it might have been kind of cool to get more often than not i feel like for imperial stuff mm-hmm. we get i'm an imperial this is the right thing to do yeah oh man maybe this isn't the right thing to do hey mm-hmm. you know what i'm gonna switch sides and do the right thing yeah and i feel like that's a, most imperial things we get whether it's battlefront 2 generally where yeah. I felt like that was advertised of like play as an imperial. I'm like, oh man, what's that gonna be? I like? like what we got, but I wish we got the first part more. Yeah, and I don't feel like we yeah. ever really get to see. And and maybe it's because like, oh well, that's you, you'll be evil and stuff. Yeah. It's like, well, have have your protagonist be, have them believe in what they're doing, but you're playing and you know it's this yeah. is wrong. But yeah. you get you get to experience what it's like to be on the empire side more. So my perfect one know. is Callus. Like Callus spent enough time as like. Screw this guy. He killed all of the Lasats. He killed that one stormtrooper just because he made a joke. Mm-hmm. You know, it's, that wasn't a battle. It was a battle droid. That was a person. Yeah. And then all the stuff happens with Callus, and by the end, you're like, yay. Yeah. I love your 70 haircut rebel look. <laughs> yeah. So, I don't know. I kind of want a little bit more out of the Imperial side of this one. I, I, I think I agree. Though, I will say there's something I actually wanted more than more Imperial stuff. I don't know if you felt this way, but... You know, Star Wars is obviously a very visual language type of property. Like, it's so much of it is spectacle. I've never seen this before uh, when it comes to the way these wars are fought in these here stars, right? Um, I felt like uh, the author, Alexander Freed, who I also learned was the main story lead for the Imperial Agent of the Old Republic. Okay. So if you're playing the Imperial Agent storyline, you're you're checking out uh, Alexander Freed's work. Okay. I know that was kind of cool. I know uh, Drew Carpesian did a lot. A lot. It, uh, he did it, but a, I didn't know yeah. about any of the others. So that's really yeah, cool. Yeah. He was way more Kotor, Knights of the Republic, loosely with Kotor too, and I think he might have done some stuff. He worked on including Kotor, the Red I just book I don't know stuff. exactly what he did yeah. on it. So I thought that was kind of cool, but personally, and this might be a a thing that stems from this being a video game that has a book supplement in that I feel like we would have this great buildup to, to a battle. Mm-hmm. It would be tense and I'm worried about the characters and they're like ready to fight and the battle would happen. He'd be like, and they battled for three days and that was it. And then uh, AT STs chased us. and That's it. You know, like I felt like we would crescendo up to like, all right, and now here starts the cool scene in this book. And then it would kind of end quickly. Sure. Did you get that feeling at all? No, I get what you mean. Um, the there's a few battle points that I think feel like that a lot. The uh, I always say that because it feels like build up and then go play the game. I, and I, well, <laughs> and I think part of what that is is that yeah. through a lot of those we follow Namir. Yes, um, which is why I th- I, like in the Band of Brothers idea that I had, I think no, it would have right. been yeah. cool to like, okay, here we go, we're here, and you hear Namir's perspective, and it'd be mm-hmm. it might even be more uh, Game of Thrones ish, right? Where yeah. they jump from character to character. Yes, it'd be neat to see here's Namir, and then you end where he's at with whatever, and then mm-hmm. you jump over to Brand, or you get to see Roach or yeah. Twi- and you get to, f- I think it would make the battles seem a little bit more grand, mm-hmm. but you're seeing different perspectives of those. Um, gotcha. There's some elements of things that I really like that he did with a few battle things or elements in the story. Yeah, yeah. Um, but yeah, I, I definitely, I even think like in the last fight, like because we're only really seeing Namir's perspective. Yeah. Like this, I, it was a few. I feel like it was a, a day or two mm-hmm. fight or something, right? Like there was at least a day where, like, I remember, like he's like, it's morning now, yeah. and we won. You know, and yeah, I'm like, sure. I feel like we missed yeah. a lot of this fight, you know, but you're right. I feel like you know the last couple books that we've done, we've done some more like youth books and stuff so one this was a very long book in terms of like what we've been doing a a little bit the last couple badonka gonks so it took me a bit to get through Mm. and but i also had the feeling of wanting more in a bad way Mm. and those two things i feel like sometimes i'm like ooh, not good (laughs) sure i get you mean so that's like my biggest negative is that i should never have a feeling with a book this long that's like, ah, oh, you didn't go far enough. Yeah. You know, I wanted you to go further. But again, I'm also trying to remember that this is a supplement to a game that is all you do. Sure. So I kind of get it, maybe. You know, I can be forgiving a little bit. Forgiving. Like, I'm the person who, I wish I'll forgive you. I will no, forgive you. I just mean, book. like, uh, <laughs> I can understand it a little bit more, that decision. Yeah. As an author or a storyteller. No. Um, as far as the book and, like, some of the story aspects and stuff, like, Namir, I thought was uh, a very interesting character. Mm-hmm. I liked a lot of the story bits they had with him. I love uh, the moral and, like, he's not your Luke Skywalker, your Obi-Wan Kenobi, 
that you know your princess leia that mm. has principles and you know like that's why i'm fighting <laughs> you know sure. where you kind of get that more archetype fairy tale feeling of a character yeah this was a entrenched soldier yeah and i appreciated that point of view yeah. especially for a battlefront Time. Yeah. yeah, I like that. I, I mean, you you get a good sense of his personality whenever yeah. uh, I, I don't remember who it was or if they had names even, but there was some people being rowdy at a place. Um, I think when they were trying to recruit, I think or so. something like During that, the, or just yeah. after recruiting during the company parties. Yeah, they have, and yeah. he's like, "I will put you in the airlock and lock the doors because uh-huh. I don't have bullets to waste for you, or f- you know, air to waste, yeah. or you know, any of this. You'll just starve to death and it'd be terrible." And he's like, "I can't really do this, and I wouldn't do this." Yeah, but they don't know that, <laughs> you they know. know that. But, yeah. So I thought that was an interesting thing where it's like he seems really intimidating, mm-hmm. but then it's like you get into his internal side, and he's like, "Well, I wouldn't really do this, yeah. and or I don't have the authority to do such a thing." Yeah. But I will scare them into listening. Yeah. No, I, I, I definitely felt the character's relation to like Cassian Andor, mm. and the way that morality is a privilege for the the people that are like on camera all the time. Yeah, sure. <laughs> you know, like I'm not on camera all the time. I got to do the dirty work. So yeah, I, it kind of well, reminded the, me of uh, Andor in a way. There's a moment there when he's looking at the morality of. Uh, we haven't really talked about uh, Chalus. Yes, the governor that they meet, who's one of my. One of my favorite characters, mm. maybe one of my favorite Imperial characters, like top. I really liked the. I really liked it. They're they're really full of ego. Yeah, which fits really well for an Imperial. The one thing I really like that they end up doing with the character uh-huh. was that there's there's so many times throughout where Chalice is talking about like, oh, okay, well we got attacked. Yeah. Well, why do you think we got attacked? They're probably trying to stop me. <laughs> like, can't have someone know. you know spreading Imperial you know information. Yeah. And and actually during that part uh, they mentioned Sibo uh, from Rebels. Yeah, which I they did mention Sibo, which I thought was a cool little name drop there. Wow, I didn't um, make that connection, but I remember the name. Yeah, Damn, this was great. So this was yesterday when I was driving. Mm-hmm. This when I, when I was telling you about like I need to write her down a note, yeah. and I was like, Sibo was that one? <laughs> yeah, that oh, was Sibo. I was like, I gotta yeah. write this down so I don't forget Sibo's uh-huh. here. That's cool. Um, you know my favorite part of uh, before we move too far, Chalice. Uh, when the Battle of Hoth scene is happening, it's just so funny that we as readers know that's why Vader, we know why Vader's actually there. Mm-hmm. And he says it in the book. But I just love that this character is insisting, no, this is about me. This is about my book. This is about this. Yeah. I'm the spotlight. Yeah. And Vader kind of is like, uh-huh. <laughs> Where's Skywalker? Yeah. <laughs> no, that's what I think that's is so funny. That's one of my favorite parts. I just love that the ego of the character was trying to supersede what we know about Star Wars. Yeah. Like I, I thought was funny about her was yeah. just the ego that she was so important mm-hmm. that they were sending Imperials for her, yeah. that Darth Vader's here himself yep. to come and stop her and get her. Yeah. And I was just like the it, it feels like an Imperial. So mm-hmm. like when we get to the end of the book and like she does what she does, yeah. I'm like, I'm not really surprised at mm-hmm. it at all. Like that kind of just fits with her. I loved it. I was so happy that we didn't have her do a, a face turn. We kept her heel. Yeah. You know, it took balls. Yeah. Because, again, how many Imperial stories do you have where uh, they come around? Yeah. Not. Yep. Keep very it bad. Um, and, yeah, Nexus. Yeah, that was another one of the things I was going to mention, too, was about her talking about Count uh, Vidian, mm-hmm. um, which was the villain from A New Dawn that we had. And yeah. uh, that was like, a, what, I'm trying to remember what it was. If it was like a mentor or someone someone she just worked with, but it was her mentor. There was there was the the mention and talking yeah. about him and stuff yeah. too, and how they. That was a and fun. I was like, okay, okay, that was a fun new moment to be like oh, Vidian, and that's like my first time I've experienced that. Post Badonkagonk. Sure. Kind of. I mean, we had Rail, uh, in a couple books now. You know, with Dooku or mm-hmm. whatever, but. Personally, for me, I was just like, ooh, Vidian. And I was just kind of happy. Because, one, a new dawn, Vidian, I wasn't, like, super impressed. But I also kind of like what they were doing. Mm-hmm. But I like now, I'm like, I don't know. Maybe just time just between. Shows up I was just like, ha, 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 Vidian. Look, there he is. <laughs> I'm glad that I'm able to appreciate it. Not How cyborg is he now? Yeah, not just looking down at literature from the canon. Yeah. But being a- among it now, you know? It's really cool. So, I really only had that in High Republic, it feels like. No, that makes sense. Yeah, because mm-hmm. those are going to continue yeah. with a lot of those characters, and so this you don't cool. know what you're going to get. Though, to be fair, in terms of like greater canon, looking down, Vader, Nia Num. Mm-hmm. Yeah, he's Han, he's and, and Han one. Solo, Han Solo. Yeah, you know, and on Hoth. Like I, I like yeah. that they don't just come out and say it, but this guy working on a freighter, drinking Corellian whiskey, 
<laughs> you know? <laughs> no, I mean, I I do wish we had a little bit more of, uh, maybe more of people that I you know? kind of knew yeah. to connect into some of these characters sure. a little bit. But it, it felt very like these guys are kind of on their own. For I get a lot what you it. mean. Which like, might be good too, because like this really gives you a glimpse of like, like the rebels are at a war, and there was a line yeah. they had that I really liked that I think Hal said, mm-hmm. Captain Yvonne, um, yeah. which was like, if the rebellion oh, wins, it wins completely. Like, there is no, like, well, we kind of win, or, you know, they, they surrender. It's just the rebellion either overthrows the empire or they don't. Yeah. And I was like, that's that's right. And usually what we see is, like, the bigger battles and the people who are, like, important. Mm-hmm. We don't we don't usually see the smaller little battles happening, sure. you know, around. Uh, honestly, maybe Andor is, like, like, Cassian is one of the closest to, like, having like smaller little rebel things and mm-hmm. like in the show, like kind of starting to pop up and do things in yeah. different places. Like usually we kind of see more of like, here's Luke and Leia and Leia's a princess of Alderaan. So she's really involved in yeah. a lot of this stuff. And then you have like, here's where Mon Mothma is. And there's like the higher named people and like what missions they're rebel high out. command. Yeah. yeah. And this felt like, well, like these guys listen to them, mm-hmm. but for a lot of this book, they're kind of just on their own. Sure. No, I, I I like those moments too. I like that in a fairy tale setting that Star Wars is, and you will clearly have the good guys, the bad guys, and the good guys should win. But that doesn't change the fact that you never you never beat fascism. You just do it for now. Mm-hmm. It will always come back. Mm. The dark side will always come back. You're never done dealing with the dark side. Sure, you might balance it, and things are good for now. But that unbalance will come. It will happen, and you're always going to need – you're going to have people pushing on the dark side, and you're always going to need to push on the light side every day for the rest of your life, and then when you die, someone else will take over. Yep. And it never ends. And that's true to life. It's not necessarily I, the fairy tale ending. Sure, but yeah. it's true to life, and it's stories well, it's, like this uh, that make it like, oh, no, that pops back up. The old guys in the bar uh, mm-hmm. on – I think it's on Sullis uh, talking yeah. about the – well, the Clone Wars happened, and I didn't tell my kids about the Clone Wars yeah. and stuff. I was like, well, you couldn't. They'd have nightmares, you know? Like, sure. there was that kind of thing. But then there's, like, the other old guys, like, the Empire is built on the exactly. souls of our grandchildren, now you know? Kid, like, yeah, exactly. It's, like, it's, you're not preparing your kids for what they need yeah. to It's do. like, what did we fight yeah. for, and then where are they now? And it's like, yeah. It, it's, Every generation has this battle, and that battle will continue forever. Yeah. <laughs> That's um, the struggle. That's why we tell good stories. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, another thing that I liked uh, about Namir yeah. that I thought was an interesting connection that he had early on in the book um, was his relationship with Hal, uh, Captain Yvonne, right? They, the they called him Hal as yeah. well for howling, mad howling Yvonne yeah. or something like that. Uh, the uh, the relationship he had with him was kind of interesting, and mm-hmm. he looks at him as like, well, he's my commander, and but he's not going to... I don't doubt that he would sacrifice me if it meant a, a win for the rebellion, yeah. right? And I, I thought that that was like, man, that's kind of a scary thought to have and be like, we're we're just pawns in like an overarching game. But later on, whenever they're actually fighting on Sullis, there's mm-hmm. a moment where uh, uh, they're they're fighting and they're trying to hold back, and then all the stormtroopers kind of stop, and then they split, yeah. and then an ATST like squadron comes in and starts like attacking, and yeah. he's like, that's gonna tear us up. And he's like, open fire on the ATST. He's like, sir, our our people are there, and it's like, well, for the greater good of us trying to win this, uh-huh. we have to. Yeah. And, and it really reflected, I thought, the uh, the moment of him thinking about Namir or Namir thinking about how being like he would sacrifice me if it meant a win. Yeah. And then he has to kind of make that same decision of like in in this war, mm. sometimes you have to sacrifice some people. <laughs> for us to be able to win because they're just going to keep coming and we yeah. have to stop these ATSTs. And I don't know. I just thought it was interesting seeing how, or uh, Namir have to kind of like fill into that captain role and start yeah. trying to do what, what how was doing and stuff mm-hmm. too, and kind of face the same thoughts he had about his own like commander. Yeah. In his absence of idealism, like he kind of starts getting ideals, like mm-hmm. the commander himself, right? Like mm-hmm. the way that that kind of comes around. But it's almost, uh, it's very similar to what Poe Dameron goes through in The Last Jedi, hmm. right? In that, well, what are the reasons that people are upset with you? Why, like, why is it not the heroic thing to go out there and give your life needlessly? It's like, no, make, if, your life, if you're going to give your life, it's got to be worth something. You got to think it through. You can't just do this quickly. You need to fight for what you love, not what you hate. Sure. You know? Fight to protect what you love. Mm-hmm. 
Yeah. yeah. It's it's the when you have the holdo maneuver. Yeah. Like that is being done for a reason of mm-hmm. trying to stop this ship or buy time for them so that they can get away. And per the lore, Versus, uh, th- with having all three movies out now, we know how the holdo maneuver is extremely, extremely rare to pull off. So when she goes and turns that ship, she doesn't think it's going to work. Just that this is literally all I can do. Sure. But I will do it because it needs to be done yeah. in this moment. Well, know? yeah, it's, it's trying to protect all yeah. of them. Versus then, like Poe could have just gone yeah. out and died at any point. It's like, I died fighting yeah. the Empire. But did it accomplish anything in yeah. the same thing? So like, And then in the fairy tale, in that ideal, the maneuver can work. Yeah. You know? And in, and in here, when they're fighting the ATSTs, like they destroy the mm-hmm. ATSTs. So like the lives, and there's a point where he's like, I don't want to think about the soldiers I'm seeing on the ground and if they were from the ATST or if yeah. they were from my decision. Mm-hmm. And, but the vision, yeah. yeah, it's just one of those, one of those moments. And I thought yep. like, it's one of those, it's a, it's a deeper war thing that sometimes mm-hmm. star Wars doesn't necessarily have, which is why, like when I first started, I'm like, Oh, band of brothers. Is great. Interesting. Yeah. Cause that's, that gets very dark and dirty and gritty. And you know, you, you, there's this, you fight it's, so it's hard war, and you, know? you have to wonder if you won when you come home. Yeah. yeah. But then you also see Namir, uh, whenever, uh, when the the uh, shoot, uh, it's not called Twilight, is it? Their ship. Yeah, it's the Twilight. Is it called Twilight? Mm-hmm. Uh, I, for some reason, I thought that was wrong. Like, no, the Twilight Company. Oh no, no, no. I'm sorry. The, the Twilight is the name of Anakin's ship he gets in Clone Wars movie. Yeah. Uh, the name of the ship is the Thunderstrike. Thunderstrike. Yeah. yeah. It's a yeah. CR ninety, like the yeah, uh, Tanta Four. The the, cor- mm-hmm. the Corvettes. Um, which, this is gonna be real dumb. Hmm. And remember your thought. Okay. Okay. I was confused because a CR-90 does not have a docking bay. It has docking rings. So how were, did they have a docking bay that they were docking ships in? Um, it's modulated. They It's added on after, you know after really, market. You know what's really funny? What? Corellian ships actually are very modular, so that is the correct answer. <laughs> You're right. I actually came with that knowing the answer. <laughs> oh, okay. Well, because, I mean... Like it's an aftermarket yeah, edition, you the, know? The CR-90s that I'm familiar with do not have one, but... It is a thing where Corellian infrastructure can, you can start moving things around. So it's possible they had one and shut up, nerd. You know? Yeah, sure. <laughs> all right. Well, with that, talking about their docking bays or their airlocks and all that. Yes. There's the point when they're attacked and he finds uh, Chalis and mm-hmm. um, another soldier, and I forget. Like, I think he mainly just sees Chalis, but he I think th- so. then he sees that there's a soldier in there who's like unconscious. Yeah. And uh, he opens up the door and like his concern is for this other soldier mm. uh chalice brings up an idea of like let's open it up let the fire out because there's fire in the in the ship at the time yeah let the fire out we'll hold on we'll close yeah. it up we'll be fine and he's like but this soldier is unconscious and won't be able to hold on and mm. we'll, we'll die so he risks hoping that things will calm down and that they will get air if he locks them inside this place away from the fire yep and uh Chalice is mad about it, being like, I, I was better off without you. I had more air for me. <laughs> now I'm sharing it with two people. Yeah. Um, but I, I I like seeing his concern for other soldiers in those kind of moments. Yeah. And also like when he learns about Roach having a spice addiction and like there's some different understandings he has with other soldiers that I thought was uh good to have, like here's the he he's he sometimes has to do bad stuff, but he also is caring yeah. for the I guess the people on his side, right? Yeah. It was it was it was fun to read him going through that, like learning what he means to others. Mm-hmm. Because the whole like, you know, don't leave never leave a man behind, mm-hmm. you know, that's from the first domino episode where they're training at the Citadel thing, yeah. right? And the the arc trooper comes in and he's like, You guys lost because you're literally leaving people behind. You only work as a team, as a unit, and you gotta find your place in it and then execute, you know? So him learning what he's good at in relation to others was a fun read. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, and then I I think out of the other soldiers and stuff too, mm-hmm. I think my favorite two were either Godron, which I think just because he was yeah. a he was a basilisk and yep. like a big pong krell kind of looking the, dude. He just or, spoke really fun. Yeah, like the, the, this turn of phrase was really funny. Well, yeah, and I, it was just interactions that they had together. I, I really enjoyed. Yeah, yeah. Um, and then also Brand, I liked, Me which too. was like the sniper that they had. Yep. Um, but she had an interesting backstory of how she got into the team, which yeah. I thought was cool, having been a bounty hunter previously. Yeah, again, showing that kind of like, you know, this level of rebellion, we don't have the privilege of being like farm boys and princesses. Mm-hmm. We're the bad people. We're the, the spies, the saboteurs, the assassins that Cassian talks about 
And he's like, we cannot let our bad deeds go to waste. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, that was cool, too. I like that. The bounty hunter. Yeah. Which, I, I mean, I, I think that's cool. Like, mm-hmm. uh, I mean, we've seen a lot of different bounty hunters, but to have one here where it's like I was, I took a mission, you know, Empire was hiring tons of bounty hunters at the time yeah. and stuff, too, when during the transition. And I believe that that kind of stuff happened where mm-hmm. we need people to do some dirty work. Sure. Bounty hunters will do that. Yeah. But I think she was after Captain Hal, and he offered a job, and... She had already kind of, because of what she was doing, kind of started to get to know the team and the crew and stuff mm-hmm. and was like, all right. And I was like, okay, well, that's yeah. a, I, I like that more of a, a, a twist on someone's background and backstory. Yeah. It, it made me think kind of like uh, when making like a and d character or something along those lines, like where, where'd this character come from? Who mm-hmm. are they? Have they been a soldier all the time? Did they used to be like a scoundrel or something, you know? Did they do some shady stuff in the past and they want to make up for it? Yeah. Or is it like uh like in Andor or Rogue One, where like you're talking about, like you have those people that's like, well, we've always done dirty stuff. Mm-hmm. I'd rather do dirty stuff for something good. Yeah, you know, like, exactly. Make it make it count. And yeah, I think that's kind of here. Are the things you have to do. We don't have the privilege if they're good or bad sometimes, but at the end of the day, you want to think that what you've done overall is the good, the good part. Yeah, yeah. Like you can be like, I don't want to kill anybody mm-hmm. or anything, but when you get to like, well, how do we stop the Empire? It's like, well, we gotta stop the Emperor. Yeah. Well, how do you do that? He's very powerful mm-hmm. and. Could be immortal if he has cloning or whatever else is going on. Yeah. You know, he's lived a long time. How do you, you might have to kill him? <laughs> Absolutely. Uh, I've exhausted most of my notes. I didn't think we weren't going to at this point. Oh, really? Yeah. I mean, I, uh, again, I, I, I enjoyed the book, but there were a couple of times where I'm like, dang it, I want to see more. But I also was like, dang it, I need to get through this. It's so long. <laughs> no, I get you there. Um, I have a couple other things. Uh, I thought the uh, the mission for the distillery yeah. was an interesting one. That's when they had an ATST guerrilla warfare mm-hmm. uh, takedown, yeah, um, which was fine. But it was also, I felt like they kind of showed like, oh, it was a struggle, and then it was like, all right, and then we put them in the mud and we're good. And I was like, okay, yep. I, I thought it might be a little bit more than that. Agreed. Um, but uh, I don't feel like it's very often that we have like. I'm trying to remember all the times of having biological weapons used in Star Wars. Oh, yeah. And I remember Clone Wars mm-hmm. had um, on Naboo the, the, the blue, blue shadow virus. The shadow virus, yeah. yeah. And I remember that. But I'm like, that's the only other one I could think of. So I thought it was interesting to have, like, here's you know all the things the Empire is doing. That seems like one of the things they would probably yeah. do. We've seen weapons that affect organics that don't affect mechanical sure. beings. In uh, Clone Wars, they I don't know had if you call that, the... I mean, uh, technically that would be a chemical process, <laughs> I, <assume laughs> I suppose. So, yeah. Uh, but yeah, you, you would figure at the very least in the Clone Wars, you'd have had a lot more of that that yeah. can specifically target clones. Yeah, especially in, yeah. yeah. Which I remember something about working on like a clone type of virus and they mm-hmm. were afraid that would happen and just kill the whole army. Yeah. But it, I don't remember ever coming to fruition or anything. Do clone really trooper helmets it. filter out toxins? Uh, I, I remember think they do to an extent, right? In episode seven, uh, Finn talks about how first order trooper stormtrooper helmets they don't filter out toxins, just smoke. Like he talks about that when they're planning on poisoning the Millennium Falcon when Han and Chewie take over. Okay, so at the very least, those that don't. don't. Huh? I'm just curious. I don't know. Hmm. Um, I'm trying to remember because whenever we are in the shadow virus, we have people inside things, but we also had clones there just yeah. in their outfits. But I think they were getting sick too, weren't they? I think so. See, like, like the rebreathers that uh, Qui Gon and Obi Wan use, mm-hmm. like they can't use that to filter out the dioxus gas in the beginning of the movie. No, they have to hold a breath. Yeah, you know. Yeah. But so. I, I, I assume those things, what they do is they, like, take the oxygen out, out of, the of the water, water. Yeah. and allow you to breathe. Or mm-hmm. they somehow rebreathe and they use the air you're sending out somehow to turn the oxygen. But yeah. if you breathe it out your nose, then that mm-hmm. doesn't help. So sure. My assumption is the water and hmm. the, taking the oxygen out of the H2O. Yeah. And then as Oluk... Uh, Oluk... Ju- I'm sorry, I don't know how to say your name. But the Empire gas the Geonosians. We do remember that. That's true. Yeah. Yeah. It mm-hmm. did happen. Yeah, I wonder if this was a sim- similar thing that they used too, because they use this later on in the battle, right? Or later on in the book where yeah, uh, Namir, I remember being upset, and that was kind of one of the turning points for uh, uh, I think his turn against Chalice too, mm-hmm. right? Was we did this, yeah. and this still came back, and there's a lot of I-, I love the the relationship between Namir and Chalice. I thought was interesting, and just like 
she wasn't really above him, but also she kind of w- was in different different ways. Mm-hmm. And he would listen, but also didn't want to listen. And then eventually overthrew. But then when he did overthrow it all, he was like, she was right. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know, like there, it was a very interesting relationship. And I, I, those are probably my favorite two characters in the book, which I mean, we get the most time with too. I would love a comic pack with them. Sure. Yeah. <laughs> For action figures to buy. <laughs> yeah. I don't know if we, I don't know if any of these characters show up anywhere else. No, I Cause like, so. Uh, like you were saying too, like this does feel like it's let's make a story for Battlefront, but we're not going to put it in it. Yeah, th- this is effectively the NPCs that you play here as them. Yeah, Twilight Company, of course, being like the hardest of the hard, like they're the vanguard, the sixty first mobile infantry. Right, mm-hmm. they go in when the fighting's hard, and they also cover you when you're when you're when leaving. you're retreating. Yeah, so like they're the guys that would be on the front lines in those Battlefront games. So yeah. we're giving character and story to what ultimately is not much when it comes to the game but a lot when it comes to the book mm-hmm. um and then i had i feel like i had one more thing at least what was it oh there was a uh, a conversation i thought that was interesting that i wanted to bring up too that i think was hal as well okay um i'm trying to remember the exact conversation i just have these notes here about they were it was like we're alchemists was the conversation he had. Yeah. And one of the words he had was uh, s- the substance of oppression becomes the substance of freedom. But, like, I, I just thought it was interesting because I was trying to think yeah. about, like, what does that mean? Yeah. And it's like, okay, well, the things that are the things that are oppressing us and keeping us down are the same things that will then turn us into wanting to fight for the freedom is the way I started taking it. I mean, fascism doesn't keep rearing its head because it's an unattractive idea. Right, That's like, well, man, so it'd be sure. great. I mean, Anakin, like, it'd yeah. be great if everybody did the same thing. If everyone I, just did what well, I Well, they told all disagree. It's like, well, they shouldn't. <laughs> I would well, make, how do we make it? I would make them. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. It's an attractive uh, thing that, if done um, at its fullest extent, maybe sure you might have a society that can advance certain ways, but it's not going to advance in art, in expression, and uh, ultimately won't progress. Which is why you're inevitably you will have a rebellion yeah. that inevitably will coalesce into a peaceful government that inevitably will slide back into fascism that mm-hmm. inevitably, you know, and then you repeat it exactly. and go back through it yeah. again. Yeah. It's just a matter of how long it takes, I suppose. Yep. And or, it's scary when you're on the, the backside of it and you're like, how far until, Oh no. <laughs> when, when's the next one? Yeah. <laughs> you just look at our, the human history, you go back and back and back and it's like, Oh, well, well I don't want to be, wouldn't be, want to be around during that event. Yeah. Yeah. But you never know when that event's going to start. Hmm. Anyway, right. I like to escape into Star Wars to forget about this. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, I think that's uh, I think that's most of it. The Alrighty. the one thing I didn't get to say, or I, I forgot to say earlier mm-hmm. when we were talking about uh, the ego Chalice had, yeah, Chalice, uh, the 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 ship's probably trying to get me, and the the. Darth Vader's after me kind of thing. Mm-hmm. I, I love that. It's like, oh, it's probably trying to get me, trying to stop me. That's why they attacked it. And it was like, it turned out to be a chance run-in with just some kind of uh, you know, scouting uh-huh. or just some random Imperial ship out there. And right. I, just, I just thought it was so funny, the uh, the ego that they had about how important they were mm-hmm. when not even the person who was holding them captive yeah. even thought about them, right? Like that yep. was her whole thing in the beginning, right? He doesn't even know he has a prisoner. Yeah. And it's like, it's me. And I just shoot him because, ha ha. And I'm sure. like, you, they didn't even care about you. And they were, they had you there. <laughs> like, I don't know. That's a, uh, it's an interesting just, point. Like we need to in our lives. Don't be a, a, a chalice. Don't sure. assume that every attack is pointed at you. Yeah. It doesn't, it doesn't <laughs> have to be targeted at you. Yeah. It can just be like a coincidence uh-huh. or whatever. But I did like that the end, uh, and, and part of it's, I think too, just Chayla's trying to figure out like, what is my play? I'm not yeah. with Twilight anymore, mm-hmm. and I don't know what I want to do. So I'll take every, uh, uh, shoot, what's the word? Uh, every bomb for electronics. Mm-hmm. I'm playing ion. Every ion, ion bomb yeah. that we have, and uh, I'm gonna fly it up there and cause problems with this ship. Yep. And it even like, I feel like every Imperial, maybe not Chalice, but. They had some doubts in everything they were doing, except yeah. for the pray, prelate, mm-hmm. prelif, prelate, the, uh, yeah. verge. But the uh, the 
what was the guy that was there with them? I forget his name right now, but he, even he that was there with the prelate uh, eventually kind of just went with what Chalice was doing and sh- ended up shooting the prelate to stop it. And it's just one of those things where it's like even most of the Imperials seem to be on the side of like maybe what's going on isn't what I agree with. And I don't know. I, I, I like that because I want to think good wins out, but sometimes mm-hmm. I also just want to see Imperials be bad. Sometimes when you hear the expression, oh, that person's such a great leader, their their men will follow them into hell. Mm. Sometimes it's meant as a compliment, and other times it's meant as like, oh, those sheep. Sure. You know? Yeah, I guess so. They followed that confident person who should not have been that confident into hell. They're like lemmings? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah, I suppose so. Yeah. I didn't think about it that way, too. But, like, that guy was looked up at as, like, a, a leader for his mm-hmm. men and everything, and... Yeah, he just yeah. eventually he turns on an imperial and an yeah. imperial and but then he covers it up and then just stays with the empire. He doesn't really make any major changes. Hey, or anything. you know what? Small deeds, good small deeds. I'll take them. Darth Vader did one good small deed in the last twenty his last twenty years of life. You know? Yeah, but it was a big one. It, yeah, sure. Did it make up for everything? No, no. But it did change the galaxy. Yeah, <laughs> sure. Yeah, but no, I think those are most of my uh, my notes that I had uh, over the book. Mm-hmm. I. Uh, I think overall I enjoyed it. Um, I was enjoying a lot more my second time through, trying to yeah. after having kind of a little bit better grasp on all the characters. You find that be pretty consistent your second time through? I think so. Yeah. Um, That's un- unfair for you to have to read a book twice though to yeah. appreciate it, but I understand. Yeah, well, and I think lots of times too is like I think I really start to get more of the characters and understand a lot more of them. Yeah. Uh, like once I get part way through the book. Yeah. And then I feel like. Towards the end, I'm kind of like, oh, okay, mm-hmm. yeah, this, and now I see where it ends. I'm like, okay, cool, and then I go back and I start at the beginning again. I get you. And then I'm like, okay, now I know who you are and what kind of happens with you, and I have a better idea of this. I'm like, oh, and then that's when I pick up things where it's like, uh, oh, Namir thought Hal would sacrifice himself, but then he shot his own people to take out the ATSTs. You know, like, yeah, like I, I, I can pick up those because like I forgot that before. You know, I get you. I didn't pick that up the first time. You know. Oftentimes, we're asked a lot, like, how do you guys just, like, like stuff all the time? And one of my answers generally is, like, I'm just in a good mood when I'm watching it. Mm. But when you're reading a book for 18 hours, like, you go through a lot of moods. Sure. Like, I can be in the same mood for an episode of Obi-Wan Kenobi. Yeah. In which, you know, I'm not thinking about, especially the way we do it, because I'm not sitting there thinking, like, ah, there's something I should be doing while I'm while I'm reading this book or watching this movie. There's something I, I should be doing this job or this chore, but luckily we get to do this as our job. So I'm never feeling like I'm wasting my time. I'm always in a mood of like, yes, story. Let's do a story today. Sure. Cool. And for me, at least it can be inconsistent when I'm reading a book because I'm not always in the same mood and mm-hmm. I'm doing it in my free time Sure. where I should be doing other things. Sometimes you're just, <laughs> sometimes I, I'm just, Tired yeah. and driving home, just yeah. listening to something. Like, make sure I get some of this book in today. You get, like, I get, like, it's, it's my dad's voice in the back of my head, like, Eric, you talk about Star Wars enough yeah. in your free time work. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, Tabor. That sounds right. Thank you, Nexus. That yes. was the uh, that was the Imperial was. Uh, captain mm-hmm. with the, the prelate. Yeah. But no, I, I get you. Like, and that sometimes may be part of it, too, of, like, going through and trying to get through yeah. part of the books at different times and being mm-hmm. like, all right, well, I'm already tired tonight, but I, I want to make sure I get through some of this yeah. tonight and stuff too. But but no, I think uh, if I could get through every book we did, if I could get through twice before, I think I think I'd have a better grasp and I might like them more. Sure. Because I feel like the second time I'm always a little yeah. bit more of like, oh, okay, this is kind of cool. And that's when I picked up like the SIBO. I'm like, oh, man, I missed SIBO last time when yeah. I went through this. Okay, that's I cool. Didn't, I, didn't, I didn't get them. Damn. So, but no, she was referencing, Um, it, it was kind of cool because she was talking about how important she was. Mm-hmm. And it's like, can't let Imperial secrets out. Can't have yeah. another SIBO incident. Yeah. And I'm like, SIBO incident. SIBO. I was like, the guy that knew mm-hmm. about Ezra's parents and stuff. <laughs> I'm yeah. like, okay. That's that cool. Works. So this is like what a year and a half or so after, uh, the Death Star. <sighs> um, yeah. Sibos I mean, it's, it, it's after a new five hope. Years, so, right. Yeah. So mm-hmm. it's been, it's been a little bit mm-hmm. of time. That's cause I, I, I kept confusing when we were sometimes in this too. Sure. Uh, trying to remember it, but then I do love it whenever they do like, oh man, Commander Skywalker can't blow up a Death Star every month. Yeah, <laughs> like, right. Damn, I wish yeah, you could. Ah, that. <laughs> oh, that's good stuff. <laughs> so there's a lot of things like that, and they mentioned some different things. They have a name drops for I think Masamita mm-hmm. and you know Leia. Or, yeah. I I thought it was uh, one of the interesting uh, recruitment moments was 
uh, honestly, I think it was when they were talking to Roach. It was like, is that your name? It's like, that's what I like to go by. It's like, all right. And they're like, at least it's not another Leia. Yeah. And I was like, oh, okay. So I didn't think about like people of people coming to join the rebellion and then maybe just making up a name to mm-hmm. join the rebellion. And I was like, that might be also safe for like their family and stuff too. True. But, but it's hard to find Imperial spies. Sure. But so many people are, are picking Leia as yeah. their name because yeah. I want to be like the hero of the rebellion. <laughs> that's really cool. They had the same thing with, uh, some guy named Umu seven that they talked about where he's like, you know, he's named after like chieftain uh, emperor Umu, but he's the seventh one we got. <laughs> But it was like it was seven. Okay, yeah, 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 right. Yeah, I remember that. Yeah, it, it was it was in earlier parts, and uh, I was hoping to get through it again because I was like, wait a minute, who was this guy? Mm-hmm. <laughs> but I'm like, yeah, all right. But just this, the story of him, and they talk about the creed and stuff with him and gotcha. whatnot. But but there was just the the renaming. It reminds they, me a lot of I, people seem to rename after like important heroes that they have. There's a podcast that I listen to, and like they have a bunch of different. People come in and out, new characters, not characters, but new panelists and people like in their sphere show up. But they've had so many Franks. They have a Frank Five. Frank Five? Yeah. Dang, that's a lot of Franks. That's a lot of Franks. That's like, it sounds like you're talking about hot dogs. I know. Ah, Frank Five. Frank Five standing by. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Well, um, that's. I think that's all I really have right now then the Twilight for Company. Uh, Twilight Company. Yeah. Overall, like, I think the book was fine. Yeah. Uh, I think there's some other ideas that may have been my own fault of yeah. like as I started to get into it, I'm like, ooh, I think we're gonna go this. This is like Band of Brothers because like, I remember listening to the first two, two chapters and being like, Eric, have you did you start the book yet? And you're like, oh no, I was like, oh dude, the the first two had me in it. Like I'm, mm-hmm. I think it sounds really cool. I'm in, I'm interested to see what they do with it. I went home that night and started it. Yeah, you said that, and I'm like, those first two chapters I thought were really good, and then from there on, like it kind of yeah. fluctuated for sure. me a lot. Yeah. Um, and some of that could have been like I didn't have good grasps on all the characters. Mm-hmm. Or, uh, like, we spent a lot of time with Namir, and I would have liked to have maybe just spent more time with the other characters. I yeah. think is kind of what my, my thoughts are on it. I would have, I think I would have rather have removed some of the Imperial stuff and had more, like, uh, members of the Rebellion. I agree. I think if we weren't going to, not fix, but have the, the battles be a little more robust, then I would probably lose, like, 50 pages, I would say. Sure. Yeah. yeah. Cause I, I always think of, like, like with, with this one, I think about, like, the, when you watch like a war movie, when mm-hmm. you watch like Saving Private Ryan, like all those characters are very unique on their squad. Yeah. And I felt like there was a lot of unique characters, but I don't feel like I really got to know them as well. Yeah. But I don't know. Maybe I did. Maybe I got to know them as much as like Vin Diesel and Saving Private Private Ryan, you know? But I, I don't know. I think I wanted, since it was in a book form, those are the times I really get to get into like Obi Wan Kenobi's head. Yeah. And get to feel like, maybe not feel, but understand how he feels when he uses the force as opposed to just like, well, he jumped high. Yeah. It's like, I'm bit, you know, uh, the exhaustion he's feeling and what he has to do to try to like, now I got to jump. And that's the strength of the literature format. But the weakness is that, well, you might spend time with some characters that you don't know as well as you do Obi-Wan. So you're not recontextualizing things, you know, about someone already. You're learning new things. And sometimes it can just feel like a lot. Sure. So I get you. That's true too. Yeah. But all right, guys. Uh, Eric, if you don't have anything else on that. That's um, good. Fun book. Yeah. It, it was a fun book. I, I did enjoy it. Um, it was a little longer uh, than some of our past mm-hmm. books, but it was still fun. And uh, I might, depending on, I forget what our next book is. Uh, I'm going to go look it up. Which we need to look at. But depending on how long the next book is, I might try to finish my listen through of this one. There's been a few uh, books that I've been like, man, I need to re-listen to this mm-hmm. one at some point. And I just... Haven't had a chance to. Um, but our next Badonkagonk, I believe, will be April 25th. Next is we've had a lot of messages. I can't find what the next book is. <laughs> and I believe I remember it being a... Uh, I can say the character's name, right, of what I believe the next book was? I mean, unless you're wrong, in which case... I'm pretty sure it was a Leia book. Yeah. And I can't see the chat, I'm sorry. Um, but the Leia book... Uh, here we go, Leia, Princess of Alderaan by Claudia Gray. Oh, Same well. author of Into the Dark and Master and Apprentice. It's definitely a Leia book. Yeah, just, so that's just the title. Leia, Leia. Princess of Alderaan. <laughs> I'm hyped. I love Leia. I love Padme. And I've always say in their respective uh, eras, they don't get enough to do. Sure. Yeah. Leia especially, I think. Mm-hmm. Um, Padme, I guess I does but i i think of clone wars yeah. where sh- she does a lot more in the clone wars than she maybe did in the movies she does but M- way more than the movies yeah. though in the first movie like 
I mean, she's a really important part of that and mm-hmm. does a lot, but we don't really know who she is yet. Yeah, we cut out the entire Rebellion subplot in episode three. Yeah. Like nine scenes. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. She just gets sad and dies, mostly in that movie. Yeah, she doesn't. In episode three, she's not mm-hmm. very prominent at yeah. all. She all right. She's much more, like, important and around in episode mm-hmm. one, but at that point, too, when you're watching that, yeah. she's a handmaiden that's just there, and Qui-Gon's like, Good thing the queen's not here. Yeah. <laughs> Too bad. <laughs> well, I'm going to listen to you. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So I think we're going to be jumping into some questions. Uh, we got a couple here, but you never know. Uh, we have like a half hour left. So if you get a question, we might be able to actually do it. Can we do all the questions available, Aaron? Uh, Will we, it happen? We, if we, we might, start now, we might be able to finish We might them all. be able to, but uh, there's also some longer ones here. Oh. I do want to touch on Sam's here okay. because there is uh, – uh, the last episode that we watched, Bad Batch, was really good, and I, okay. I believe it's related to that some. Sam K- KNC says, when I heard Ventress mm. was going to be in Bad Batch, I read Dark Disciple and finally watched your review, and uh, which was great. Yeah, thank you. My question is, how do you all feel about her being brought back mm. to life? I, di- I don't love it, but if her and Quinlan get back together, then it'll oh. all be worth it. Yeah, because Quinlan is... On the path out there, too. Yeah, his name was on there, yeah. at least, right? We don't know yeah. what happened exactly. Uh, I've had some different thoughts that I didn't want to say during um, Bad Batch because of Calvin and Rick. Just Same. to make sure if there's things that they want to yeah. experience. I'm not necessarily spoiling it for I've them. I've had some thoughts, too. Um, and I also don't want to tr- spoil people that are... J- maybe they just watch Bad Batch, and you know, I don't want to spoil them necessarily well, either. But on this, I feel like... probably had a lot of time to w- at least watch that trailer, which apparently she was in the trailer. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> So I do want to be able to, we can talk a lot more freely here, I feel yes, like. Yes, so absolutely. Let's spo- talk Ventress. Spoilers on probably everything that we've covered mm-hmm. whenever. <laughs> My dear Obi-Wan. But yeah, what are your thoughts on uh, Ventress's return? So here's the thing. Uh, this isn't new. Somehow Palpatine returned. Yep. Even Peel didn't die here. He dies here. Yep. Shock T doesn't die these three times. She dies this one time. Yep. Um, Kanan didn't turn left. He turned right. <laughs> you know, like <laughs> those type of things. Like, I, I get it. Like. Personally, for me, having no idea it was going to happen, I could not get out of my shock mood for the entire episode, which was a detriment to me enjoying the episode because I rewatched a lot of those scenes last night and enjoyed them ten times more. Dude, the fight with the clones is so good. It's so good. Ventress herself and her utilization of what she's there for and showing like how different she is is good. But I could not get out of the space of, like, what? Man. I'm here for it. They did it with Darth Maul. Whenever Darth yeah. Maul, you saw Darth Maul's face in that, uh, you know, Night Sister Crystal Ball, yeah. you go, wait, what? And then when it's done, you're like, oh, okay, yeah, hell yeah, that's just, cool. Just wait till Mace Windu comes yeah. back. But <laughs> I need, I, I guess I, I need that with Asajj first, you know. Like, I mean, we all had the feeling of like Palpatine's back. Yeah. In that trailer, you know, if I hadn't have seen that trailer, I would have been. Just as shocked, if not more shocked, if I watched the crawl yeah. of that. And I bet you I wouldn't have gotten out of that funk for a bit. So this is what I'm talking about. Sometimes you're just in a weird mood. Hmm. And I think my weird mood was being so shocked and not being able to stop myself being shocked and thus okay. dulling my reaction to everything else. Does that make sense? Sure. Um, I suppose so. For me, I don't think I went that way. Yeah. Um, I, I was very surprised because my first thought was like – well, she's dead. It must be Merrick. Yeah. Because I don't know any other like night sister kind of people <laughs> that it could be. I don't know who else. Yeah. Why? Like, but uh, it would be weirder if it was Merrick. It, it, it did. N- neither one made sense to me. No. I was just kind of flabbergasted yeah. with it. But then once it happened, and I'm there with it, and mm-hmm. uh, I think my thoughts went to like I'm I'm very curious and looking forward to what they do with this character yeah. going forward. Um, and and that doesn't necessarily have to be going forward. It can also be going backwards, mm-hmm. right? Uh, we. We see Boba Fett's return in uh, Mandalorian, yeah. but we don't. We just know he's there. Yeah, you know. Now, if you have Legends and stuff like that, and you're like, okay, well, same thing with Palpatine. It's like, well, in Legends, this happened, so that's probably mm-hmm. what they did. And in Boba Fett Legends, he found Lestar like that, he got back out. Yeah. You know, so like that's probably what happened. Mm-hmm. But then we don't get to see that until like another series. Or for Palpatine, we haven't seen that for mandalorian yeah. and bad batch and whatever else they're doing that i think is slowly seeding all of this in yeah. there right like in mandalorian we get uh we get a little bit things with like grogu mm-hmm. and uh uh pershing right sure yeah and like okay well what's what's this stuff and what what are they working towards what's project necromancer and mm-hmm. stuff uh and then you get bad batch where it's like oh here's project necromancer way yeah. back here and like where are we going with this but 
we had already had the reveal he returned. We did. Now we're like unraveling the mystery oh, of how absolutely. he got back. So I'm I'm looking forward to the idea of like, okay, well this is what I believed happened to Ventress. Mm-hmm. This is what I believed happened to Darth Maul. Yeah. But then we got this answer. So I'm looking forward to seeing like what they do and there's so many questions we have on the Night Sisters and the magic, and now we've learned that that Night Sister magic mm-hmm. itself has come from like another galaxy. Yeah, right. Like that's where it originated from, and it has connections to the father and the sister and the brother. And I don't know what all this stuff means. Agreed. But I'm looking forward to seeing like maybe if it's Dave or Favro or both of them or more people kind of crafting like, d- did Ventress get taken back to Dathomir to be laid to rest and something with this magics occurred. Maybe she wasn't all the way dead. Maybe mm-hmm. it's because of how she died. I don't I don't know. Could she be a clone? Like we talked about that too. Like I I don't know, but I I have I, I want to be satisfied. Yeah, I have excitement to see yeah. what it's going to be. I was extremely satisfied with Malls, but I bet you I wouldn't be as satisfied if it wasn't Sam Witwer. Adding in, you maybe know, the little like through victory, my chains are broken. You know, like he's he, he he's a, under his breath doing the Sith code, like sold it for me. The chains, the chains are the easy part. <laughs> it's, it's what, what goes on here that's hard. hard. You know, like that yeah, kind of stuff. I, like it doesn't work unless you go that deep. Um, I would say, like maybe one of the reasons that I was so shocked, and I am still dealing with my feelings on it, is I loved Asajj's end in that book. Sure. I love that book, sure. but I specifically loved it. Um, you know, I do, I'm not satisfied when Boba Fett falls into Sarlacc. I right, get him out of there, you know? <laughs> um, like that kills I'm him? not satisfied when Darth Maul, I mean, in the moment, in the movie, it's satisfying that Obi-Wan, Obi-Wan gets to win. Yeah. But you're like, oh, but he was such a cool looking villain. I'm not satisfied. I was kind of satisfied with Asajj. I was unsatisfied that we didn't get to see it in Clone Wars. Yes. But I love You know the, what? I 100% love the story. you're correct. And that's another thing, too. If those were made, this, I don't think, would have happened this way. Yeah? You don't think so? I don't think so. I think that if those eight episodes were made and they saw Asajj's end in the Clone Wars, it would not have been presented in this way. And maybe that's a good thing, you know? Maybe it is. Because, again, for what it did to Omega character because suddenly i'm not thinking of the bad batch taking care of omega Mm. i'm thinking of omega needing to shed the bad batch to do things and i'm like wow i never thought of her as an agent before yeah just something to take care of sure so that was cool and ventress brought that i mean with crosshair stuff too sure but ventress especially being like she has she could have a destiny that you are not equipped for Mm. and it's not fair to keep her down like that you know Maybe it's also things that because it was in a book, we can also revisit it. Yeah. Um, yeah. Ah- Ahsoka had a moment in Tales of the Jedi that mm-hmm. was very similar to a moment in her book. Yeah. Um, albeit a little different, but the general story was still kind of there. Yeah. Um, maybe something like that. Maybe Tales of the Jedi. I, I mean, I, Ventress will say it herself that she's no Jedi, but also so does Ahsoka that she's mm-hmm. not a Jedi. But maybe Tales of the Jedi can also cover something with like Ventress or something uh, in the future. And maybe we get glimpses of it there of what happened. So, or we get another, yeah. uh, you know, we've done flashbacks in, mm-hmm. uh, for Grogu and Mandalorian where we've gotten more information that way. I don't know. I, I wonder what mm-hmm. we'll do and if we can get some of that book in there. Yeah. You're right. I'm also curious where we, where Quinlan went, right? Like yeah. Quinlan must have escaped from the purge, but where is he? And yeah. have they, you know, Quinlan and uh, Ventress? Could Ventress end up in the next Jedi game? Yeah. And like we have Tantalor, I think it's Tantalor, right? Is what it's called. Uh, the like this kind of out away from everything place that we mm-hmm. could hide in. Could the path lead to there? And could Ventress help with the path and be yeah. involved in that for some reason? And I don't know. I, I think it opens a lot of cool things. And it was a character I really did enjoy. And her arc in Clone Wars was was great. Yeah. Uh. So I'm not upset, but I do enjoy the story and the book and however they continue kind of crafting this. Yeah. Like as long as it doesn't kind of like tread on that, uh, I think I'll be happy. Okay. But maybe they'll kind of revisit it like they did with Tales of the Jedi and still kind of keep it, you know, maybe not, maybe not Tales itself, but maybe in some way or fashion. Or, the only that thing that I'll in. say to that, and I think that's a cool idea, and I'm sure if I got that, I would be like, hell yeah, that was fun because there's some really talented artists working on these things. Um, the only thing I'd say is like, I loved that we got Darth Maul's answer in the thing that brought him back. Sure. And if you're going to take up, <laughs> see, this is my selfish part of me. I don't take up a tales of the Jedi episode with something that should have been done here. You know, 
<laughs> like, it's what people got mad at with Book of Boba Fett. Okay. Right? Yeah, I guess. But I wasn't mad about that. Well, no, For because... For me, it was just Star Wars in, like, the Mandalorian stuff that happened in Boba Fett. Yeah. It was just like, that's just continuing my story. Yeah, stuff, I mean, you know? I don't, I don't... yeah, it's just continuing that version of the story, and I understand yeah. that. We had an important Boba yeah. story in Mandalorian. Yeah, so but Tales of the... Mandalorian? Like, Book of Boba Fett was never going to have, like... Uh, here's just a random story about Plo Koon, <laughs> you know? Sure. It was going to have something super related to what Boba Fett's going through, mm-hmm. and that's other Mandalorians out there gathering their families. Yeah. So I get that. Uh, if I'm doing an episode of Tales of the Jedi for a Ventress thing, I might be like, this is cool, this is interesting, but I, the, Tales of Jedi has so much potential, I almost want to be like, no, do it somewhere else. But that's just that's a part of me that is willing to be... Uh, not being beholden to my first reaction and feelings of something, but willing mm-hmm. to open up and be like, okay, okay, if you're going to do it, it better be good. Sure. Let's see it. Yeah. And I'm willing to see it because they did an awesome with Maul. Well, it could even just massage. be, it could be, it's not a Ventress, but it's mm-hmm. Quinlan, Tales of Quinlan. Yeah. And Ventress has to be a part of it kind of thing, you know? Yeah, that could be cool. Which I think would be a neat mm-hmm. way to do it even. Definitely. Uh, but yeah, I don't know. Yeah. I'm not against uh, her return. I'm just kind of looking forward to seeing what comes of it, I guess. Yeah, I mean, I, you know, there were certain people that didn't like the Clone Wars stuff. Uh, I'm sorry, the, like, Order 66, the way the clones turned on the Jedi when they watched Revenge of the Sith. They're like, that's dumb. They just listen to this guy and do it. They betray everything, you know, not knowing that this story will come. It will come in something later, deeper, and we'll think about it. Sure. And now when I watch the scenes, I don't even think about it anymore. So future Eric looks forward to rewatching that episode, not in the mood of, like, complete shock and bewilderment yeah no <laughs> totally understand that all right um let's see what questions we have after that hopefully that answered your question yeah, Sam. that was one question um let's go with uh i mean uh boba skywalker i see there real quick yeah uh maybe not real quick it's a little longer one hello i've recently been getting a lot of uh Revan merch at GameStop. Ooh, yeah, I'm wondering what your opinion is of when we will see Revan in any Star Wars anything. Well, they canceled the remake <sighs> or something. I don't know. They canceled it. Slash, it's being worked on. Slash, you're an idiot if you think it's still being worked on. Slash, uh, they announced yesterday that it's being worked on. Just pick one of those. You might be right at some point. They announced yesterday something? <laughs> That'd be great. I haven't seen anything. Yeah. No, I've been very, uh, very sad to... I was so hyped for uh, that little teaser mm-hmm. of Revan coming out. I think you and I both were like, "Oh yep. shoot!" Because like that was a game that like I played some of, but I never really beat it. Like mm-hmm. I, I mean, I played it like three times, and each time I got further and further. But yep. something always happened. There was uh, I, I borrowed someone's Xbox, and I had to return it, and I never sure. got to finish the game. And then uh, I had an Xbox, and it got stolen from me, and I didn't mm-hmm. get to finish the game. And then uh, I think I tried it on. PC or 360 at some point in the future again, and I, I still I forget what happened. I still never yeah. finished it, but I got almost all the way there. That's, like because yeah. there's like you know five six planets that open up, and first time I got to one or two, and then mm-hmm. next time I got to like three of them, and then next time I got to like oh, I got five. I only got one more planet to go to, <laughs> and then I just never finished it. So what I was, was excited for that. I, I want to see more. What's the name of Darth Malik's apprentice that tries to hunt you down in that first game? It's Darth B. I think it starts with the B. But depending on what order you do the planets, he'll confront you on a different planet. Hmm. So I remember like playing that game two, three, four times, and he confronts me on different planets each time. Really? Yeah. Man, I, I can't remember. remember the name. I don't know. We don't have chat up, so I can't see it either if it, if it is there. I don't remember, but they yeah. might let us know. Darth uh, something. But it's been, I don't know, it's been yeah. so long since I've gotcha. played it now. I did it uh, at my current house sometime during Blind Wave. There was like a May the 4th time that I was just playing like, like I did like a... 10 hour stream and every two hours like I switched to a new Star Wars game uh-huh. or something like that so I played a little bit of like Jedi uh, what's the last Jedi it's not Outcast is it Jedi Knight Jedi Jedi Knight uh, Jedi, Jedi Academy, Academy. that's mm-hmm. it um, Darth Bandon was his name by the Bandon? way Bandon yeah just Brandon with no R alright but I played a little bit of that then <laughs> I played uh, KOTOR during that time yeah. and I played something else and I just was swapping yeah. games but no, I don't know uh, as far as more Revan no, Boba I, I bought the Bastila figure uh, a while ago at GameStop. Yeah. And then Aaron sent me like, they have a Revan too, and I yeah. haven't bought that one yet. Oh, no? But they go really well and scale really well with Gentle Giant figures that I have a couple of. So. Gentle Giants, yeah. okay. Mm-hmm. But really cool. I'm glad. I'm glad it's happening. Um, I hate Revan's lightsaber. Sometimes I have Oh, to, the hilt? Sometimes I just have to say that that one that has like all the, the four corner spikes. Yeah, it has like, yep. it has like these like, yeah. Yeah. 
I don't often say that I hate a lightsaber. I would never use it. But between the Inquisitor lightsaber and that, like, I truly don't know which one I'd rather use. I'd rather use Inquisitor saber. Really? I feel like I could at least hold it. Yeah. Even if I had to just fold the one part down and just fight like this, yeah. you know, one I'd hand, be fine. Yeah, I get you. But Revan's saber it looks like, like how can I? How do I hold it up here? Yep. But all the better for him if it works for him, you know. I guess. I think he's wrong. I'd rather just have like a little axe on the end. Or something. He's one of the most famous Sith lords in history, and he was a Sith lord for like two years. I mean, I yeah, but is he? Is he a famous Sith Lord? Yeah. I guess the Darth Revan kind of thing. Ask know. George Lucas when he was going to bring in famous Sith Lords during the uh, the Mortis the- arc. It was going to be Darth Bane and Darth Revan. He was gonna, they were going to appear as ghosts. And Dave Filoni was like, well, they can't. I'm like, What do you mean? It's like, they can't live on after they die. Isn't that like the whole point? Ah, fucking Dave. And they wrote it out. <laughs> Well, then we got a Bane, right? Then we got a Bane. That was gonna be a, It was going to be the old version of Bane, which was like the cage and the uh, the insect armor that he used to have. So he put a... Do you remember this? And, I, I've only read the first yeah. book, so I'm trying to remember what all happened. So, yeah, it. Bane has these like two large insects as like his breastplate, oh, and yeah. they grow yeah. throughout his body. But to make sure they don't suffocate him, he has a cage around his head. <laughs> yeah. That was the old version of Bane. And now there's I like the Mark, the first book. there's like a Mark Hamill samurai one. Yeah, it was in the Drew Carpeshian books. Yeah, it, but it, it, that was a concept before those books too. Oh, really? Yeah. Okay. Huh. So I'm not really sure where it's from. Maybe like one of the old uh, table, like the tabletop RPG stuff. Surprisingly, has a lot of weird legend stuff in it because that was canon, you know. Yeah. But it's just guys making up entries, you know. <laughs> so it's it's kind of fun to to raid those old hmm. things. But I'd love to see the. KOTOR game get a remake uh, especially if that my assumption was always that they were going to release that and maybe start to dabble into the old Republic um, especially since Disney always seemed to whatever the fandom wasn't liking we pull away from and do something else yeah. <laughs> you know it was like well stay away from the prequel stuff don't do anything there and then it's like well they don't like the sequel stuff you know what give them a lot more prequel stuff I know. you know <laughs> let's do I that know. stuff more and Disney just constantly is like alright we'll pivot away from that yeah. And it's like, man, is there anything they won't complain about? No, there's not. No. <laughs> just, just try to make good stories. Just just yeah. do that. And then. I well, no. It, for me, I think the winning formula is like just hire good talent. Sure. Like hire storytellers. They have something to say. And I think they do. Yeah. Just sometimes things don't work out. Or sometimes a story can be like for me, like sometimes stories are 100%. I love this. And the person beside me is like, I hated every second of it. That doesn't change how I felt. Sure. And my me feeling this way doesn't change how you felt. That's I, art. I also think like trying to make sure you're getting people who just have that passion for Star Wars. Yeah. Like I think Dave and then there's been uh man, I'm trying to remember some of the other directors and stuff that I've I've heard stories from where it's like, you know, I grew up it, the the Dark Disciple book, right? Mm-hmm. Was by uh George's daughter, wasn't it? Katie Lucas. Katie, yeah. Mm-hmm. And it, like her little thing at the end was like, oh man, I remember going to the theater and watching Star Wars mm-hmm. and being on set and stuff. And there was like this this nostalgia and passion for seeing yeah. and wanting to add to it. Um, Di- uh, uh, Dallas Howard. Bryce, Bryce, Dallas, Bryce Howard. Dallas Howard. Yeah. She talks about being, you know, Ron Howard's daughter. And she would like go, like when she was a kid, they'd go to dinner and it's Ron Howard, George Lucas, and Akira. Uh, Kurosawa, <laughs> Kurosawa, yeah. Kur- it's Kurosawa, and they're like you know, she's just listening to them talk about in a galaxy far, far away, <laughs> that type of stuff. But like just having some of those, like you know, like Dave, I feel like has a passion yeah. for Star Wars and stuff too, and like trying to make sure there's people there that aren't just so, like, oh, yeah. you know what, having a Star Wars movie would look good on my mm-hmm. resume. Versus, like, I want to add yeah. to this universe. I really liked uh, a headline. I didn't read the article because I I got to stay away from all Star Wars things but every once in a while you do see a headline i saw leslie headland i think is the name of the acolyte showrunner okay talking about in the writer's room yes obviously like she like, i'm a giant star wars fan she had this thing about like uh hey there was this really cool like expanded universe thing i wanted to include and like no one told me no so i did so it. i did it okay <laughs> yeah, you know that's, like, that, cool. that's cool but she also talked about how important it was for her to make sure that in the writer's room there was a non-star wars fan to make sure to be the barometer like hey if i don't know anything about anything does this track? Sure. Which I thought, why would you not do that? It's literally, if you're doing a science experiment, you need your control group. You don't want to just all, you know, market to just people th- that know I, what they're doing. I think you need to have a, you need to have someone like that yeah. who can be a barometer for that. And then you need to have someone who is like with the Star Wars lore Bible mm-hmm. where they can be like, okay, well, we can't do this because of this. Yeah. But then these people can be like, well, you shouldn't do that because sure. what does that even mean? 
Yeah. Okay, we better describe it and tell yeah. them what it is and stuff, you know, like make sure that they yeah. understand it. Because that's the thing you need to do. You need to do it for a new audience because some people mm -hmm. have not seen Star Wars. So this may be their first Star Wars thing, yeah. which is crazy to think about because it used to be your first Star Wars thing was just going to be these three movies. <laughs> that's all there was, you know? Yeah. Now, like people may watch Mandalorian having no Star Wars connection to anything. Definitely. It's, it's, it's definitely going to happen. Yeah. And that's the beauty of a living mythology. Yeah. So you need to be able to have all these individual stories and mm -hmm. stuff make sense within that, but then maybe have some things in there too that just add to the lore for the, the big Star Wars fans that are wanting to like really see where it goes. You're but so right. I, I am excited to get. Uh, that's why church was boring. Same stories. Same stories. Yeah, oh, no, was there a new one? <laughs> I heard this last year. Where's the Bible part two? <laughs> My Catholic priest used to do the same sermon on the same day every year. Really? <laughs> wow. All right. But I, I don't remember like like you know being like eight or nine, being like, I remember this. Get new material. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, but I don't know. I, I I love I love the idea of moving away from the Skywalker like yeah. eras, right? Like there's like sure. okay, well here's the Skywalker saga. And I love adding more to that time frame, mm -hmm. even if it's not directly connected to Skywalker or yeah. Anakin, Luke, any of that. Uh, but it's also really cool to be able to like, like the idea of adding to the Force, where the Force comes from, and stuff too. I think it's just a neat idea. And letting storytellers put like their thoughts and feelings and emotions and express them. Yeah. In these stories, I mean, that's the reason this stuff lasts and become and remains relevant and can you know be something for children to look up to and for adults to look back at yeah you know well and it's like watching star wars visions where like some of those are, like really cool just here's a little story in the galaxy somewhere mm -hmm. and it's fun yeah. not all of those are necessarily for me yeah but it's cool to see like well here's just a story somewhere in the galaxy yep no no connection at all to skywalker palpatine vader nothing like that perfect you know? example of why i love just like i'll bring in some new people you know have you ever done anything like this before? No? All right. Have fun. Star Wars, go. I love that. Yeah. I mean, I, I like episode nine, but I, I was just so into another director. Sure. <laughs> then JJ again. Yeah. <laughs> um, but yeah, Boba, uh, answer, I don't know when we'll see more Revan. Revan. I hope to see Man. KOTOR at some point, but. I completely forgot what question we were answering. Yeah, yeah. I'm Revan. sorry. Um. I want to touch on this one though too. Star Cross, uh, Star Cross. Yeah. Uh, just send this one in, but it says, "How do y'all okay. feel about the twenty-plus hour Skywalker Saga marathon some theaters are doing for May fourth, which I just found out about this week. I think someone okay. said something. I think I, I don't know. It might have been one of you guys, or someone said it somewhere. And I was like, "What? That's a thing? I didn't know there was a thing. It's not for me. No. Not for a th not in a theater. No. I've never gotten to see like the original movies in theater." And I would I go also just to the original never movie. saw episode two in theaters yeah. because I don't know what happened. Episode one, I saw like four times and yeah. episode three, I saw at least twice. Mm -hmm. But for some reason, episode two, and I was young enough not to be able to like drive or have money or any of that. So it was relying on my parents. Yeah. And I just never got to see it in theaters. Gotcha. Okay. That sounds fun though. I mean, yeah. We want to go. <laughs> I mean, I mean, yeah, <laughs> Maybe we can just go. <laughs> yeah. Now I hope it doesn't like what episode two? Episode two was. Yeah. Okay. All right. Which, I mean, like... I'm going to say, they're probably going to start, like, midnight and then roll over the next day, right? So, yeah, unfortunately, like, huh. the original trilogy is probably going to be in, like, the middle of the night. <laughs> so, a lot of people that want to see the original trilogy in the theaters for the first time might have to go... Yeah, what time do you start, That's yeah, so what I'm saying. If it's This is a really long marathon. I'm out. Like, I might be with you for Lord of the Rings. But Star Wars, no. I can't. Is, is Lord long. of the Rings shorter? feels like it's shorter it's only three movies yeah but aren't they like five hours each yeah but i only gotta get up once <laughs> <laughs> per movie you know what i'm saying <laughs> i don't know if there's anywhere nearby that's going to be doing it for us because i doubt that our local theater is going to do it i can't see them doing it either now um but it's cool it's but yeah again not necessarily for me but i hope people that go have a great time and uh uh enjoy star wars together huh Whatever this one is, they have like a breakfast, a lunch, and a dinner time accounted into it too. Nice. Starting at ten twenty p.m. Okay. And what ending one? by eight twenty seven p.m. And that goes episodes one, two, three, breakfast, four, five, six, lunch, seven, eight, dinner, nine. Yeah. Hmm. But all right. Anyway, Godspeed. Sounds cool. Say. Maybe I'll just do my own. All right, <laughs> yeah. kids. We're all watching this movie. Right. Let's go. Um, 
let's see what else we have was uh carl kraus says um oh. did you see that someone that looked like plo coon was in the acolyte trailer i did uh it was later i saw a screenshot of it uh just looks like a keldor from behind uh on a scene where there's like i don't know 10 jedi in the shot uh so at best we can say there's a keldor in this show um Plukun is over 200 years old, so that would track if it is him. Okay. So it's possible. Okay. But I'm unconvinced until I see or hear James Arnold Taylor. <laughs> is, that, is that what you got to hear is him? Yeah. Okay. Has he always little, done Plo Little, little Soka. Yeah. He just, he, I think his direction was do Gandalf or something like that. Okay. Yeah. Uh, who did it in Clone Wars? James Arnold Taylor. And then who and then in the movies? Did he ever talk in the movies? He never talked in the movie. Oh well. Nope. Okay. Never mind then. Kayani Money Talks, not Blue Coon. Yeah, most of the council doesn't talk, do they? It's really just Yoda, Kai, and Mace. And Mace and then Obi Wan. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Oh, man, that's crazy. Like Adi Galia doesn't talk. Man, okay. All right. Well, that's sad. She screams. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> um uh st- a stupid, stupid. A stupid says. Oh, do you think Hondo could become the Talon Carta Car- figure, figure yeah. of the Mandoverse and heir to the Empire movies? Oh man, that'd be kind of cool. Yeah. So I'd Talon see... is the the figure that I showed you, the yeah. re- re- rebel leader. I'd love to see Hondo again somewhere, taking up like a more rebel leadership thing. He kind of got there a little bit more at the end of Rebels, right? Him and his little Ugnats. Yeah. I oh th- no, that's true. <laughs> I don't know. I think that. He's an older man at this point. He just, he's having a good time scamming people at Galaxy's Edge. And I, I kind of think that's a perfect place for him. Yeah? Yeah. Uh, people from all over the world can go and celebrate their Star Wars fandom while Hondo Anaka tries to take your money. Um, I don't know. Yeah, I guess. I don't know. I mean, <laughs> when does uh, Galaxy's Edge take place? It takes place uh, after episode six, but. It's, uh. It's during the sequel trilogy. It's like between episodes eight and nine, I think. Eight and nine. I think so. Well, so like, like that three year time what's period. What's he been doing during like during uh, the Ahsoka show? Yeah. Like where do you go then? Because like he kind of joined Rebels a mm-hmm. little bit. Like he might still be around. Maybe. Maybe he does that, and then he goes and retires and he goes and sells stuff to get your money. He never came across as the guy that's gonna like retire and live rich. You know? Sure. He's always going to be after the next scheme. So sure. wherever he is, he's not going to stay there long. No. <laughs> he, needs get, he needs to get paid, too. Yeah. But I, I'd love to see Hondo somewhere else, too. It's always fun when he's... you see him show up. Remember when he would duel with Anakin Skywalker? Yeah. But sometimes he had a tank. True. Or yeah. a or a monkey lizard. He had an electro <laughs> staff when he dueled with him. He did, yeah. Yeah. I just I love Hondo, and I just love that one of his feats has dueled Anakin Skywalker and lived. But on a resume. Mm-hmm. Uh, Matthew McGee says, have you played 2015 Star Wars Battlefront game? Uh, did yep. it help you immerse yourself into that world? Um, I haven't played it while or since reading the book, uh, but I did play Battlefront. Yeah. Uh, I played all four I Battlefront games. Me too, but I haven't played it since Battlefront 2 came out. I guess there was one on the PSP that I may or may not have played. But, sure, yeah. But Battlefront 1 and 2 and then Battlefront 1, one and, and 2. two. Yeah. I've, I've played all four of those. Mm-hmm. Um, I do want to go and play it again but i don't know if it really like is there any way of seeing oh this this could have been this character like i don't remember being able to play characters a, a no you know? but solace yes solace at least yeah yeah that was like the big new looking planet yeah new looking planet the big new planet in that game so it was heavily featured i, I did love on the comic art you know i did love like the combat that they had in that where mm-hmm. like there was the the drilling in the lava yeah, and i was too. like oh they're so cool yeah so there's some cool stuff there um Make sure we're good on time. Okay, we, we gotta get, get to all the more. questions, not, Aaron. Really all, to all of them. them. Um, uh, it's Bonin says. Do you think Bad Batch will meet any more characters before the conclusion of season three? I don't know. That's like that was another thing about the whole Ventress reveal thing. Like when when Maul happened in Clone Wars, there was never I was never like ah, there's not enough time to explain this. I'm like, well, Clone Wars, they could. You do as much. We'll you get want. to this in two seasons, and they did. Yeah, <laughs> you know, but Bad Batch, we'd only have a certain amount left, and this is the final season. So, uh, I don't know. I'm not sure what's going to happen, or if the, we have any other big characters. The but... only other one I kind of want, and that's just because of Omega, is I want Boba Fett. 
yeah, somehow. And 100%. I'd love to see that, but maybe that can be another story. And then personally, for all of you guys that watch every trailer you can, like I want you to have a big, giant surprise in this final season. I had a big, giant surprise, but I guess they had it in the trailer. But I need them to have one in the show. I want sure. the storytellers to surprise you, not the marketing team. Yeah, I understand that. But I hope there's more. Um, Jason Winston Jr. says, Who did you guys like more between the two clones we lost, Nemec or Fireball, uh, a few episodes back? Also, do you think Echo, Rex, Gregor, and Hauser will recruit more? And shout out to Samson's Samson's armor. Samson's armor. Samson had cool armor. <laughs> Um, I definitely think those characters will recruit more. Uh, we might be leading up to some type of clone rebellion. I don't know if that's something that like finishes in Bad Batch or continues on somewhere else. But maybe we'll see. we have to kind of acquire Wolf yeah. at some point. Mm-hmm. Um, I was thinking about this at some point where uh, Wolf and his responses that he's had has been good, where he still trusts. You know, he trusts Rex. Yeah. I think he trusts Cody. He trusts like those guys. Mm-hmm. So he's like, we'll look into this more, but. He was also the clone who called the Empire whenever the Rebels and Kanan and stuff were there, too. That's true. And I was like, you know what? He does kind of have that connection to the Empire different than what Rex would. Like, I don't think Rex would ever have done that. Yeah. No, but Wolf he never would have done you it. You know? Yeah. Like, well, that's the rules. It's kind of yeah. the way I feel like Wolf kind of follows it. Agreed. Um, and then also, like, was he was he there in the battle? I remember Gregor being there, but I don't really remember Wolf being around much. In which battle? In like in Rebels later on when we get like the like the big fights and stuff. Was Wolf, yeah, the, was Wolf the, there the, too? The three, yeah, they're there. Okay, uh, like on uh, like fighting there on Lothal, on Lothal and stuff yeah. like that too. They're in the scene like the the penultimate one at least. Okay, I'm pretty sure because I remember Gregor fighting and yeah. stuff too. But mm-hmm. um, but I I liked Fireball because he was also the chef. Yeah, and then he you know uh, yeah I'll fire. go Fireball too just because and this is not fair to this clone but. I already had a character named Nimic in Andor, and I don't want another. Okay. Because it can be confusing. Too many Nimics. <laughs> um, Mr. Joss Buc- Bucan- <clears throat> Buccaneeru. Okay. Uh, do you expect Marin and Ventress meeting mm. in some at some point, and how could that go? They are the last of Dathomir. They are, and they're very different in terms of being Dathomirian, whereas Ventress is a Force user um, and uh, definitely has magics. a lot of their martial stuff. Marin is magic, but she's become a lot more martial as well. Hmm. Like she's, I feel like she's way better at fighting than we saw in Fallen Order. Yeah, I love her staff. I love the, uh, like now we know what it kind of looks and feels like when she goes through. Uh, oh, she yeah. teleports, mm-hmm. you know. And I kind of like that. Like that's a cool moment. Maybe if she loves you enough, you can go along with that tunnel too. You know, oh, that's kind of cool. If, if she loves you enough, you can go in her through portal. That. No, yeah. is that what you're saying? Next question. Um, we have a uh, mutter nonsense. He says, I haven't seen all of Eric's survivor streams yet. So maybe he has an answer already. Okay. What do you think are the in universe reasons for, uh, the hearts kind of covering it, the floating plat for one, the floating platforms and oh. two, the crystals for force essence crystals of force essence. Um, like I don't think in Canon, they're necessarily there. I think it's just parts of like, force concentration you know like i don't think there's a crystal in the cave on dagobah but i think that if you went there you'd find one there in survivor does that make sense okay sure yeah i just think it's like a it's just a gameplay mechanic like whenever we see characters use the force in the movies it's not like we see like this blue glowy thing around their hand it's just telekinetic power but in lego we do but sometimes in lego or the force <laughs> unleashed or other video games yeah we actually see it because it's way more exciting for uh, a visual a, a, as a visual to yeah. see that type of thing well we, what you know was it uh cal, so i kind of just like blur, blur the line a little bit was it cal and um also maybe the younglings in clone wars when they're going and trying to find their crystals mm-hmm. they find like fake crystals yeah. right like there's something there and then they get there and it's gone sure. like, or they breaks hold apart. it and they open it yeah it just breaks yeah. apart like that seems kind of like the force in a way mm-hmm. kind of like tr- either trying to entice them to a location yeah. or trick them or test them right so yeah. maybe something like that too. i like to think that what we see in front of cal when he's interacting with those is what it feels like for cal to feel the force in that moment Does that makes sure sense? i get what you mean maybe something like that the uh platforms um, I, I guess just to create 3D space 
platforms, like maybe for maintenance, could be good. You don't have to put up scaffolding. You just throw up one of these platforms, and now you're working. Or so, I don't know. They're kind of like floating buoys, right? Is that what you're yeah. about? The ones that the you, ones can, that like, you pick up and, and throw. Then you can like jump yeah. to. It's not yeah. like a stormtrooper can do what you just did. Yeah. So what are they for, really? But yeah, it seems to me like maybe some type of like construction infrastructure that just happens to be in different places. I don't know. Yeah. Yeah. Hmm. It. I, I don't really have much of a problem in like glassing over my eyes and it's like video video game mechanic, Star Wars canon. Sure. You know? Like the question of the uh, the force echoes, the force, like the, the testing things where you yeah. got to fight like, well, here's uh, Ogda Bogdo and, yeah. his, and his son. Sure, right. Right? Like whenever uh, Dormu, is that her name? The, the lady who runs a store? Domo. Domo. Whenever she t- like turns and looks over her frog lady. Yeah. Or frog like pet. Does she see a big glowy thing there too? Right. You know, or is it just like visually for us, Cal senses something here yeah. and he goes, and then when you go into it, he has the vision of what you're experiencing mm-hmm. and playing. That's how I would take it. I guess. Agreed. I don't think she looked, Oh geez, where'd that come exactly. from? Yeah, I don't think yeah. that happens. All right. Uh, we have enough for maybe one more. <gasps> okay. Uh, let me see. We had, uh, I think I skipped one. I'm trying to see where it is. Uh, Jason Winston Jr. has another one here that says, Hey, fellas, I was just wondering, with Rebels and Andor already in the works Mm -hmm. and it all leading to Star Wars A New Hope, would you be open to more content of this pre-galactic Civil War era? And for me, I'd say yeah. Uh, I think it'd be cool to visit uh, where I know of Han Solo being around there in that time, Lando Calrissian, Boba Fett's around there. I've I've said multiple times, like, how cool would it be to get Daniel Logan to, like, reprise being Boba Fett in, like, his younger years, right? right. Like, the time frame we don't really get to see. Because we don't see him until Empire Strikes Back. Yeah. Right? So there's a big gap there. And we got to see him a little bit, I guess, with Jedi. Mm -hmm. So he looks like that. Yeah. (laughs) You know? But uh, I always thought that would be a cool story to have, like, a little younger Boba. Like, like what do you do after Clone Wars, Mm -hmm. but before really being... A, 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 yeah, the Boba Fett. Sure, like he couldn't fit into his dad's armor right away. But it'd be cool to maybe visit that. But I think there's a lot of stories you could do there that are kind of disconnected from uh, uh, the Skywalker saga itself, mm-hmm. like with Andor and whatnot. But yeah. it's also you're getting that feel of what it's like to be. How dangerous was this rebellion era? This yeah. this empire taking over, and we get that from Bad Batch, and we get it from Andor. But those are also, I feel like, at the ends. Yeah. Like Bad Batch is just at the beginning, and Andor is like right there towards like what we know of with A New Hope and stuff, you know. Sure. Uh, yeah, I'm super. Am I open to it? Yeah, I'm super open to it. But I'm craving, and this is a crave. All right, I was recently di- uh, diagnosed with diabetes. I'm ah. craving sugar right now. Oh, okay. So you I want crave sugar. sequel trilogy stuff. Yeah, that's true. Uh, I I'd, just I'd love that. I, I mean, I'm you know, I, I understand why you know Lucasfilm and Disney are doing what they've done for the last fifteen years, and well, people are complaining we shouldn't, you know. But have you learned nothing from George Lucas? <laughs> well, I think I think. <laughs> I mean, yes, I know that he was bullied into uh, selling Star Wars by these people, but still, I think like, in a roundabout way, we are getting information to feed the sequel trilogy, yeah. right, with uh, Pro- Project mm-hmm. Necromancer, but. Yeah. I would love, and I, I said this before, like, we did episodes four, five, six, yeah. and then we didn't do any Star Wars for a long time. And then since then, like, that's been how many years? Mm-hmm. All those actors have aged a lot. Some of them yeah. have passed. Some of them are no longer able to reprise their roles, you know? Like, we have, you know, the actors of Finn, of Poe, of Ray, of, yeah. like, all these new characters that you've introduced to us. Let's explore that maybe a little bit more or add in some other characters and have them dip into where we can see more with them Sure. before it hits a point where it's like, well, now it's too late for these actors as well. Yeah. Like, I love being able to see Obi-Wan Kenobi reprised by Ewan McGregor. You know, like that was really cool to have. Like, maybe we don't have to wait that long for some of the other ones, you know? Like, I'm glad Ray's coming back for the new order. Me too. But what about Finn? What, I what, need Finn. What was Finn's story? Where should that go? I and need, I want to know more of that. I just... I know I want yeah I oh. and then uh the couple characters that came in episode nine there's what uh, Zoe Zori Bliss Zori Bliss mm-hmm. the like, who's that Oma Tress I want to learn about more about Oma Tress he's an episode nine character and if you don't know him look it up and have some respect for that man John Williams uh, oh him <laughs> it's his cameo the bartender he's a bartender <laughs> okay 
I was gonna say like I don't know. Is that the guy who's voiced by Luke Skywalker in the very beginning of the jumping? No, we get uh, Anzellans a decent amount now because yeah. of Babu Frick, but and uh, Bulio species. I recently saw that Bullio? too. Yeah, um, Mark Hamill voice win the war. Oh, the one I was just talking about. Yeah, okay, yeah, that's what yeah. you just. Said. I was okay, I was right. mentioning him. Yeah. yeah. Yep. Uh, I'm picturing him. He kind of reminds me of Greece mm-hmm. a little bit. A little bit. But no, I don't know. I don't necessarily Boy. have. Like, I love KOTOR. Like, the Old Republic era would be cool to visit. We have the High Republic stuff that mm-hmm. we're going to see more of. I, I would like them not to ignore the sequel era either. But yeah. I love the prequels, and I love the original trilogy, yeah. so filling in more of that is also very interesting to I me, just, too. I, I, I want to just stress to Lucasfilm and Disney, like, don't be cowards. Don't let these people just be in super upset all the time. For profit, but change what people want. <laughs> so, so here's the thing, too. Do you... Do you focus on a story like right now with like Mandalorian, Book yeah. of Boba, Ahsoka? Mm-hmm. We've all been kind of leading to this movie, right? Yeah. This Heir of the Empire. And Bad Batch doing, has had right? little bits of of talking about Return of Palpatine. Too, sure, right? Yeah. Sure. Um, but those like, is it better to make sure that we're continuing this one story in this area where these are all kind of connected, mm-hmm. or should we be kind of making sure that we well let's do this, but let's also jump over the future with this one, and let's jump back to the past with this one? I mean, I, I understand it's a very difficult question because you're. You have to answer that question as a marketer. Yeah, and I, I, I'm, I have no interest in marketing. I only sure. have interest in storytelling. Yeah, but how so my is- my answer to that question isn't the right one. Sure, but it's mine. Like, how hard is that to follow? Uh, maybe even not for big Star Wars fans either, yeah. but for like a casual Star Star Wars fan. I'm sure. I um, mean, I remember people blaming you know the Rogue One and Solo and those movies coming out while the sequel trilogy was coming out, like within those years, you know, and people being like, you know, who's who is Jen? Who is she? Ray? You know, it, that's going to be a question like my dad has, but it's, you know, I'm a Star Wars fan. I, I'll get it. Sure. Tell me a BBY and I'm there. Yeah. What BBY is it? Yeah. Done. You'll get that. <laughs> Sometimes just like you just need to have some kind of time frame for yeah. people to understand. That's why I love but about Andor. It I, used BBY. Oh. I also <clears throat> I also love to cover uh, Darth Maul. Yeah. In that pre galactic. Empirey kind of yeah civil war and live frame. action like I know that there's weird stuff with Ray Park but God it'll be so cool <laughs> so <laughs> but I don't know we'll see hopefully uh, acolyte opens up some stuff from like way way in the past yep. and people enjoy that uh, and then uh, I don't know where we're going with Dave's stuff with mm-hmm. the movie and everything but I I hope that we also don't leave out the sequel yeah. trilogy either yeah agreed. <sighs> All right. I just hope that the Star Wars fandom like could accept something like that. I got a, you know, we're we're wrapping up here. I want to end this with just my sheer and utter disappointment in some of the some parts of this fandom's response to the Acolyte trailer. I cannot like I'm real I feel like I'm pretty open to like, well, how would you feel? That's cool. That's your feeling, yeah. you know? But man, I just feel like there has been a concerted effort from a certain group of fans to give no grace at all for a storyteller completely writing off dumb stupid there's these dumb stupid theories there's these dumb stupid stupid points i generally i can like sequel hate you know when people just don't like it and they can tell me the reasons why i'm like sure. oh, cool i understand like that's not yeah. my thing but i understand no. it makes sense i mean i have issues with the sequel yeah. trilogy as well but I, I still enjoy it for the most yeah. part. But but I, the response I, to the Acolyte trailer, I haven't seen one of those yet. All I've seen is just grifter dumbness. <laughs> I've seen, it's ridiculous. I've seen people being like, this looks terrible or this is bad. Yeah. But I'm like, well, let's see when it comes out yeah. and see what happens mm-hmm. and if it's good or bad then. Like this is to give you a taste of it, yeah. which if you don't like it, that's fine. But like, sure. I don't want to call it bad yet because I don't even know what the story mm-hmm. is. I don't know what the actors are doing. Like, yeah. I don't know anything about it, really, you know? Yeah, no. Just I mean, a visual. Thing. I think it's some of the most freeing live action we will have gotten ever in terms of, like, what can you do, where can you go? And, uh, yeah, just the response to it has just, it, it's, it's, it, it fuels me to continue Wave Squadron and keep fighting the good fight against just people that profit off of getting you angry, mm. you know? Sure. I mean, there's definitely yeah. that to happen, so. Yep. But <sighs> all right, that's all right, how we're guys. End it. Yeah, no, I agree. <sighs> uh, I hope people can find the the fun and enjoyment and the things they loved as a kid from Star Wars mm-hmm. that 
is there now that it's still for kids. And my my kids love a lot of different aspects of Star Wars, but they also don't love all of Star Wars either. No. But I don't think anyone necessarily does. I think no. there's d- people are going to have issues with different aspects. But it's parts of Star Wars I hate. We should talk about those sometime. Maybe. We should. But not today. Hate. Maybe the next time, which was going to be April 25th. Will be the next Badonka Gonk yep. uh, podcast where we're going to be covering this is- Leia, Princess of Alderaan by Cla- Claudia Gray, who previously wrote Master and Apprentice and something else. <laughs> All right, guys. Thank you so much for uh, joining us for this podcast. And we hope you guys have a great, uh, I guess, month until we see you guys on the next uh, podcast. So, Gonk, that is all. Bye, everybody. May the force be with you. Gonk, <laughs> We're learning here before we know it, August 2nd through the 4th. It is Blind Wave University is the theme this time, and we are hosting it at Merida College. Remember, tickets are limited and on sale now. Head over to blindwave.com slash wavecon to buy your tickets today and enroll in Blind Wave University. Class dismissed.